morning, everyone. Welcome to the um, Georgetown <coughs> School Committee meeting of Thursday. On here it says Tuesday, but it is oh, Thursday, geez, March 28th. That, That's why I was looking. Um, Thursday, March 28th, 2019. Week. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you all for coming out this evening. Um, before we get to our regular business, I do just want to make a motion to uh, approve our consent agenda, which includes public relations subcommittee minutes of March 6, 2019, negotiation subcommittee minutes of March 6, 2019, and acceptance of warrants 38P19 and 39B19. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Before we hear from our student uh, representative, who this evening is Haley Zadina, so thank you for coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, just before we hear from you, I do just want to recognize an individual that was uh, extremely mind. important to um, the school community and also to Georgetown community as a whole. Um, this, this week, March 24th, we lost um, Mr. Reg Tardif, who was a teacher here in Georgetown for 30 years. He was also the... Um, the social studies department the, the department head um, he was the founding faculty member of close up the Washington Washington DC trip he was uh, very much into civics and <laughs> um, just really had a lot of great things to do with the community he also was a um, member of the st. Mary's Church which I would see him on Saturdays he was one of the collectors him and his wife and it was sad when I noticed he wasn't there and then the uh, church would give us a update on his um, health. Um, so this evening, uh, the superintendent mm -hmm. and I both um, had an opportunity to go over to his wake and meet his um, lovely children they were. who were so proud uh, of their dad. And I can understand why he was a gentleman. Uh, that's Very much. definitely a, a, way to describe him he That's would come right. to the school committee meetings every couple of years and talk to us about the importance of civics and yep. um i'm gonna miss him yeah I and know. i explained that to his his children and they were so glad um that you know we went to yes to pay our respects and they've actually had a number of faculty members and former students who've come by and you know always had a st interesting story and that's what they're really touched by is the the way he touched people's lives unfortunately sometimes we don't hear that enough and then when we pass away our family gets to hear it but um, you know as Barbie said he you know Reg was like a you know one of those those people who just you know he gave you his word he, he did what he said he was going to do he was a doer not just a talker um, he loved kids and, and he loved his town mm -hmm. And uh, he put a lot of time into doing things. You might not always have agreed with Reg, but you knew he did his homework. You knew he, he listened, you know, and then he made a decision and he stood by what he meant mm -hmm. and what he said. So, you know, we will miss him. Yeah. And I'm it's glad you acknowledged him. I have on my list to, to do too. Yeah, his sons, the, the two sons uh, were there talking, and they, so the mom is um, sick as well right now. Um, so they're dealing with a lot, but one of the sons said, I wish. Um, I, I have the brains of my dad and the body of my mom. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. But what nice, nice kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, they were so raised well. Missed. I, I know that the community will miss them a lot. So now with that being said, Haley, thank you for mm -hmm. filling in for Chloe today. Uh, what's going on in the schools? So recently, um, on March 13th, there was the NHS induction where about 40 new juniors and a few mm -hmm. seniors were inducted, and I think that's a pretty large amount of people, especially with like the mm -hmm. high requirements that it takes, so I thought that was pretty impressive. And then last Friday was the underclassmen frolic dance, yes. and I thought it was like perfectly executed. I went, there was a food truck and a photo booth, and I think they were both a huge hit, and I know everyone left very happy. And, it was and the DJ good. was that's good great. too, right? I heard yeah. that the DJ was the really whole night good. I think was great. It was probably one of my favorite frolics. Oh, good. That's what Michael said too. Yeah, it was yeah. very fun. Yeah. Was it the food truck for Michael? 
The, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing outside. People are waiting. It was oh, that's cool. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, that's great. People are like waiting in the, like, it was very cold. That it was day, cold. Like, especially yes. cold. And people are standing the in like, girls they're, in like yeah. short dresses. Yeah. So it was no, that's kind of funny. Nice. It's important to keep people fit. But the Grand March, I heard, was <laughs> yeah. wonderful. It was, yeah, I honestly thought the night was, was so, like, it was just thought out. Everything was thought out. So I thought it was really nice. nice. And then sports tryouts were last week, and they're starting this week with scrimmages, and I think next week games. So that's something that kids are excited about. And then it's also the end of the quarter next week, and kids are choosing their classes right now. And I think everyone's really excited about AP Psychology, the new class this oh, year. I think there's going to be a ton of kids interested. And seniors are also picking where they're going to school, so mm -hmm. it's a lot of talk this time of year. And then on Monday, April 8th, um, a bunch of students will be going to states for FBLA, which is yes. Future Business Leaders of America, and we're competing. It's like mock business events. And I think there's like... 40 or 50 kids going, which is pretty impressive as well. And the last thing is Disney is April 10th, and the students will be leaving at 3.15 a.m. And yes, <laughs> we will be going to a bunch of workshop, uh, one workshop, I think, and also we'll be performing Friday the 14th, thir 12th, <coughs> and we'll be coming home the 14th. Yes. You guys will have a great time. Yes, yes, I'm very the superintendent excited. will be there. Mm -hmm. I'll be I saw you with me yep. on the chaperone. Chaperone, <laughs> right. <laughs> exciting. Yeah, I'll see it through the kids' eyes, right? Yes. Which is what, is what I really wanted to do. <laughs> I will, I'll be the one going to the park at two in the morning. I, I don't mind. So I'm, I'm a night owl. <laughs> yes, we know. So if they're looking for somebody to go to the park, I'll go. Well, that's good. I'm glad. This year flew by. Can I know. It's crazy. Yeah. I think yes. March especially, I feel like it just went like so quickly. Yeah. yeah. And are you playing a sport this no, season? No. I'm not. No, but she doesn't have that thing on her arm. I have to get another cast next week. Oh, she does. <laughs> and they broke her wrist, right? Yes. yes. It was mostly like a soft tissue, but they thought it would be better, but it's all bruised, so it's still not better. So next week, wow. another one. Because yeah. I was hoping Haley was going to play lacrosse or softball. Since oh. If I had to do it again, I would play lacrosse, I think. But yeah, that's what she said. So it's her senior year, but you can't play with a cast. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might consider that a weapon. Not allowed. <laughs> And so the prom, too, is coming up. Yes. Um, it's the last day of school for seniors. Okay. May and It's when, late, later this year, yeah, right? Yeah, When will first. those tickets go on? Is it just a couple of weeks before? or I think it is, like, just the week, two weeks before they start selling them. Okay. And it's at the Danvers Yacht Club this year. Yeah, so that'll be really nice. I'm really excited. Yeah, that will be. That's that a, will it'll be, be nice. It won't, it'll be warmer, I think. Yeah, it's gonna, it's probably going to be warm up, but it's late at night, so hopefully, since it's on yeah. the water, too. That's yeah. a good okay. point. Yeah. It's beautiful. It, it's, it was kind of cold. The, you know, the one they had, it was a beautiful setting. Yeah. And was it in Topsfield? I, I can't Last remember. year it was in Ipswich. Ipswich, yeah. Ipswich Country Club. It, yeah. The year before it was Topsfield. Topsfield, that's one. That was and a beautiful was setting, beautiful, but it was but cool. Because <laughs> it was all outdoors. Yeah, all, yeah, the tent was outdoors. The food was indoors, but the tent was outside, yeah. Well, that's great. That's great, Haley. Yeah, well, so can you. I just clarify, yeah. the end of the third quarter is um, the next April Friday, 5th. or is it Monday because of the one snow day? Oh. Listen, I think it's still the fifth. I'm not sure. <laughs> Liz is shaking her head. Yeah, it's a half day. Do you know? Do we, do we, is that true? I don't think they changed it. We didn't change it. Okay, so next Friday. Yeah, it's a okay. half day. It's Good to know. Thank you. And there, I, I should mention, I don't think I get it right, though. There's, there's three, three young women who are going to be performing, I think it's this Sunday, at Southern New Hampshire University in a Young Inventors, right? Am I right on that, Liz? Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. They're, they're actually performing. It's all at the morning. I think, I think when I saw the agenda, I think it goes through 1230. But I'm going to try to go up. They're students yeah. of ours? There are students. Do we know who they are? Oh. Liz, yep. you know? <laughs> I, I, I can find that out, I think. Is this the first time that we've, we've been represented? Yeah, yeah this, it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. That Mary Lyon had... Um, Wow. Done so some from the creativity showcase. Oh, they were okay. judged there and then yes. selected to go and represent. Oh, wow, that's great. I remember hearing about that. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm sure I'm sure we can get okay. the names of those. Two yeah. Here. So look, here it is: Lauren Bartlett, Maggie ja uh, Jackson, and Jenna Tabankin. Wow, that's They'll nice. They'll be competing in the Young Inventors Convention this Sunday. Timeline is you know so they get judged in the morning and then there's an award ceremony in the early afternoon. Right. But, you know, I appreciate Mary, you know, Pulling taking those yeah, students on awesome. and, and providing them with an opportunity to right. to, to, to participate. Uh, let me ask you, Haley, how was the credit for life? 
school. Oh. It was very, like, <laughs> made everything seem a lot more real, especially since we all, like, chose our majors. It had actually our job and then, that like, was what great. our expected salary would be. And um, everyone dressed up and everyone looked really nice. And I, like, we didn't really know what like, to expect going into it. And then when we got there, like, it was so, everyone had a blast, I think. It was really yeah. fun. That's great. It's like made everything yeah. seem a lot more. So real. it was a little different because they used to they they last year you guys just did gave a certain amount right. So everybody had everybody let's had say thirty nine thousand dollars. Right. This year they actually had to research a career that they might want and what they would make. I wonder if and that then, changed their mind when they. I think salaries were like twenty two thousand dollars, and then was like twenty six. And then I know someone who is one hundred eighty two thousand dollars as a starting salary, so yeah. they had yeah. so much money. What I learned, yeah. what I learned is oh, being an orthodontist. That's what she was. One hundred eighty two thousand dollars as a starting salary. That's what I keep saying to Stephen. You get Fridays off. But you know, Cher but Cheryl and Michael did, and Pam all like really. Played a big role, so yeah. appreciate it very much. That is, that, that is great. Organized. It's a great event. It's very well organized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah, that all the kids happened. really yeah. seem to right. enjoy it. Mary did a lot so too hard. because, oh because Mary did. Mrs. Ryer was yeah, Mrs. Ryer was out. Yeah. Right. That was a lot so on she for took her. on a yeah. tremendous amount. And TD uh, Bank was really, really generous with a, a huge, a large grant, two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, which we couldn't have done it without that. I yeah. mean, that was you know incredible. Yeah, so very, you know, yeah Mary, I think, very Michael, you would ask me, you know, sort of going forward, we were too. we were talking about, you know, like, we want to keep it going, and initially it was, you know, you needed the money to be able to do it, and you still, we still need money, but we won't, Mary thought we wouldn't need as much going forward because she bought a lot of things up front, you know, like the tablecloths, mm -hmm. the, the signs, you know, a lot of those kind of things that you would use, you know, so that when, if somebody came and sponsored it, it, it wouldn't be the full... Five thousand dollars, you know. So, which is which is great because I feel like we need to find money in our budget to make sure that that event can happen every year. And it'd be great yeah. if we get the bank to donate it every year. Yeah. Because um, it is a, a great community project, and there were so many community volunteers there. Yeah. Including there were like, like forty TD Bank people and a lot of community members. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so I think it's a great opportunity for a bank to sponsor something like that. You know, it's all about financial sense and literacy and yeah but it was a wonderful event good i'm glad it went well glad good. you asked her because it really was good well thank you thanks again thanks for family. covering for chloe um is there anyone here from the public that wants to talk about anything on the agenda tonight okay we're going to first hear from um our technology specialists yeah so we have uh, miriam bravo liz marchetti sandra sportskoff and colin and their help their help with colin Thanks for coming out tonight. You're welcome. I appreciate it. It's always nice to hear what's going on. It looks like this mm -hmm. a lot. It's good. <laughs> yes. <Hi>. So <laughs> five minutes for each section. And, <laughs> and anybody who worried that the technology integration specialist was a position that wasn't needed or wouldn't be used, right. I think needs to rethink that uh, that thought. Yeah. So so. Uh, yeah, time <laughs> I um. Hi, hello, Hi. good evening, good to see everyone. Um, so I asked the, we, we met as a, as a team last week and I asked these guys to put together a presentation and they did and it is great. Um, but for, for this presentation, what, what I've asked is to just kind of highlight lots of the things that are, that are going on and you've now got the, uh, the presentation as well. But then I asked the, the integration specialist to focus on maybe one project that really showcases and encapsulates kind of the process of integrating a project with, with a teacher or for a specific lesson or unit or assessment or whatever that may be. So um, we'll quickly go through some of the, the, the many bullets that you'll see to kind of get a, a grasp of the wide variety and array of ways in which uh, these uh, women are, are helping our staff out, but then uh, to really dive into some of the nitty gritty as far as the process. So we'll start with Pembroke and Marianne. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're fortunate to have Project Lead the Way, and um, so um, I'm, I get to go into the classrooms and either um, assist or um, demonstrate how you teach it. And um, <clears throat> it's our second year, 
so it's really going well. And the teacher, I'm in such demand now, I had to have a separate <laughs> calendar for just tech requests, which means I'm coming to you or meeting you in the library or wherever, in addition to the makerspace calendar. So, so that's, that's for signing up for the makerspace. But I am like, I am booked solid. Mm -hmm. And this year, hopscotch is new. And so that that is a huge leap from scratch junior to hopscotch. So I'm focusing on, on third grade at the moment. Right. And um, I just try to implement all the different programs that we have at the school. And this year, we did um, get Learning Ally, which is um, where they read the books aloud. And it's oh. going very, very well. So e just implementing it, making sure ev all the names are in there and everybody has access and knows how to use it and the letters go home to parents and just kind of facilitating it. And um, yeah, so. so. That was actually a, a, a program that Marianne brought to us. We were looking at some other options for, for our students that, that struggled with text and having them have an audiobook option for them. And she brought that to us and really, really pitched it well. And it, it went out, it's been going, going very well for our students. Yeah, so they can access the cur right. curriculum. And then um, there's just more programs that we, we have. Um, so like, and sometimes just teachers, like in grade two saying, oh, I really want to, um, you know, do a slideshow so when the parents come in, I'll, I'm working with them and they can see how to do it. So we're working as a team to, you know, put a photo on the slideshow. So we just come up with projects and we work together. And then typing club too. So I brought that in and we're always talking about how we, um, take that. how we change that. <laughs> so keyboarding's important. Okay. Especially now that down to the third grade, our students are taking NCAS all online. all online. So that's, uh, yeah. Wow. So we're going to bring, I think next year, we're going to bring that down to grades one to four. And then five and six will go on to the typing.com that um, they use in the middle school. Yeah. And then, um, so teachers try all kinds of programs and become experts. So um, Caitlin um, used peer grade. And so sometimes I'm invited to just see how that works. And um, I don't, whether it's the YouTube project or just changing the library curriculum. And we try all kinds of things. Seesaw worked extremely well in um, the specialists because it's a great way for the specialist to communicate. So Brian, um, we recorded all the third graders playing the recorder. And, and then we could send it to, we sent it to fake parents just to test it. So <laughs> Margaret, <laughs> so we sent it. And it was a great way to see what's going on. And you could see like when they've started learning the recorder and then after, you know, so there, it was, it really worked well. So sometimes we just pilot something like that to, and then we'll, you know, we'll see. And we, so, and I, and I also have Tuesday, try it Tuesday afternoons for teachers so that they could try any of these and they're welcome to come to that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anything here you want to um, highlight? Yeah, just, um, yeah, we use the green screen. It's just teachers who, um, QR codes is something that we used. And even in grade four, they used to do Google Slides for their animal project. Now they do SIMD websites. So we just kind of change it up. I'm like, okay, you've done that for a few years, so now let's try this, and they love it. So they're creating a simple, like, five-screen website instead of a Google Slide. So, and I remember when it was on just poster board. It's just yeah. poster oh, board. Yeah. Oh, it was poster board. <laughs> projects so, we have a long way. I do, I do. That's my yeah. Work. So I wanted to show the one on the left. left. This, one this is a green screen and so Mr. Ford's, Kevin's class um, wrote these PSAs, personal service yeah. announcements, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the students wrote them and then I videotape and then they, um, whatever was on the green screen, they put the image. And so this is an example of one. Sorry if I blow your ears out. Oh, oh. oh sorry, it's coming through here. It's not going to help us now. No. Sorry. Is that as loud as it gets? Yeah. She wants to pay students for good grades. Oh. Oh. Innovative. <laughs> yeah. People already do that. <laughs> That's why we got to turn it in. <laughs> what if you put it close to that speaker? Oh, that's a microphone. It's, I think it's just for TV. So anyway, so they wrote their P PSAs, and then we create, so they learn how to create the video, and this year I just typed up the instructions, so they really didn't need me. 
And so they had the instructions. And then they create a QR code so they can go around the room and watch each other's videos using the QR code. So that's just like a project that we, I'm like, oh, you're writing those. Why don't we try this? And why don't we try this? So the second year now, they're doing the QR codes. And they don't really need me, or I just show one person, and then they go from there. And um, the other girls made a video that we showed in the morning about um, cooperation or friendship, something. I think friendship, it was. was it friendship? Yeah. So we don't have to show that. So they they made a video on their own, and they realized how hard it is to make a video. And then we put it into iMovie, and I showed them how to do everything, and they made a video of their own. And um, it took months for them to write and act out a video. And that was on their own time, like recess. My room's filled at recess and you know other times because they want to do these extra that is awesome. projects. That so is it's really just an open-ended thing. And so sometimes it's because I try saw now. Kevin try now. Um, you know, doing the PSAs. I'm like, well, let's try this. So. <laughs> but I do go to the um, staff, the team meetings so that we could connect. Oh, the grade level meetings? The grade level yeah, meetings, yeah. Fixed it. Sorry. Which is why I'm here to tell you that paying students for strong grades can be extremely helpful to many people. Yeah. To begin with, it can help lower income students and families. The paper project in Chicago gives ninth and tenth graders money for great grades. You can get from eight hundred to two thousand dollars. This is why it, this will help A bunch of can because <laughs> they can buy their own things or give the money to their families. I know that I have been to a store and wanted something, but I didn't have. I couldn't get it because I didn't have enough money. So, if I got paid for strong grades, then I would be able to buy my own things and materials. <laughs> Very cute. So they all had their own, yes. you know, <laughs> personal service announcements. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, okay. For our middle high school folks. And on top of what you're going to hear from Liz and Sandra, I think we've included a couple of their yeah, monthly their updates monthly in updates, the packet. Yeah. So uh, that's just a good little snapshot of what's, yeah, I love what's going on, I what's pressing in the, in the building. All right, so just to take you through our process, um, and this process changes depending on the teacher's needs, um, but generally speaking, this is the process that we go through. And it's very similar to the engineering design process, which is why we put that up there. Um, and that's the process that students follow, whether they realize it at, all, at times or not um, when they're in the makerspace working on a project. Um, so initially, the teachers will reach out to us and they say, you know, we have this project, we've been doing it for years, we want to change it up a little bit. So we'll meet with the teacher, brainstorm um, what we can do, um, some ide initial ideas that they have or what do they hope to do with it. And then we, they, the teacher will provide to us um, their lesson objectives, any standards that they're working towards, um, any materials that they need. And then we hash it out. <laughs> we brainstorm. We, we brainstorm together, and we say, "What what are some new tools? What is a new method? What is you know a project that we've seen? Um, what else? What can we do? What are the possibilities?" And something I learned through my MIT Makers Group is um, identifying um, how to identify potential projects and how to um, rate each potential project against um, a variety of different criteria, um, which we do informally at this point. Um, and so then we'll propose to the teacher um, a couple of different project ideas that we have that are just like in the brainstorming stages at this point. And then that meeting we have with the teachers is really where the magic happens. Um, and oftentimes they're combining a couple of ideas or they're taking mainly this one but adding a little bit or then it sparks something in their minds and like, can we do this? And they start getting excited. Um, and then we revise the proposal um, to focus in on the exact idea that they want to focus in on. Um, and that's where the planning and the prep start happening. Um, whether we're prepping or they're prepping um, a worksheet that's accompanying it, a Schoology page, a project sheet, the rubric, all of the materials um, is what we're doing during that time. 
And in the meantime, um, we're teaching the teachers um, any new tools, apps, equipment, anything specific in the makerspace that we're going to hone into um, with. And then we begin to roll out the project with the teacher. Um, it is our goal, depending on our schedule, we do our best that one of us is there for the rollout of any of these projects, um, mainly to support the teacher um, initially. But the hope is that most teachers are rolling out the same project to a couple of different classes, right, that they, they teach. Um, so usually what happens is one of us will roll out the new technology, the equipment, the methodology behind the project. And then usually the second period, the teacher and I or her are rolling it out together so that by the third class that the project's being rolled out, the teacher is good. They have the language. They already can anticipate some of the questions that they're going to get and they know how to respond to those questions, um, knowing that they're not the experts maybe on all of the equipment that they're going to be using. Um, and then we're there through the dur duration of the project um, to be another hands on deck. Anybody that's been into the makerspace seeing, you know, 15 to 20 students working simultaneously knows the more hands on deck, um, the better. Uh, from not only an adult perspective, but I pull from our interns, our GTEC students when we're doing projects um, that they can support um, in as well. Because the more experts you use, I don't like using that word, but the more knowledgeable people you have surrounding you, the easier it is going to be for the student. And then after the project, um, we debrief with the teacher. Um, and it's always our goal to debrief as soon as possible while it's fresh in our mind so that we can start um, writing down and keeping track of all of the changes for that particular project for next year. Um, because there's always going to be tweaks. Um, two projects. Uh, go to, I'll pause for our projects for one second. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to add one thing about the previous slide. Obviously, for bigger projects, the process is longer, but oftentimes teachers will come and say, I just need, this is what I'm doing, I love my project, I need a minor tweak that doesn't necessarily take a ton of time. So um, we're both all over at all times, mm -hmm. um, doing big projects, small projects, whatever works. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the, pro let's see, these are the prog programs that we offer, um, lots of makerspace project and equipment that um, Liz has gotten through her grant awesomeness, yeah. for the yeah. lack of a better word. I don't even know what else to use, uh, which is great. As far as um, other technology that we have, one-to-one, -one, I think, Colin, you're going to talk yeah. a little bit about that at the end as well. <laughs> but there are a number of apps that we continue to utilize to make sure the process works really well. Um, some teachers utilize it more than others, probably the biggest two. Apple Classroom, which is still a classroom management, and I remember having this discussion before we implemented it all. But there is a way to streamline the process with the kids, um, make sure they are on task. We are able to see what they're doing on their iPads while they're in our classroom. It's lovely. Most of us don't really stand there and watch what they're doing, but there's that possibility of seeing it. Even after we end the class, we can go back and take a look at what apps they were on even if we didn't catch them at that particular moment. <laughs> um, the other is Schoology, which we continue to use at the high school, middle high school level. And I can't give you a specific number of teachers, but I would probably think a, like a huge, huge percentage of teachers are using Schoology yeah, right now, which is to um, upload our assignments. Kids will submit their assignments. I grade my major research papers, giving them feedback constantly, and a lot of people, a lot of teachers do that as well. So that's our big one. Um, the other one I just, the other two I wanted to stress, um, Notability, that is, that was and is a paid app. Every student has it and it is constantly utilized for note taking, but it's very interactive where teachers can use it for other things. I don't know if you use it, well you are a senior so you don't have one to one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> One holy one, yeah. Um, my favorite. Your parents aren't doing this. <laughs> my favorite, um, probably Martha Dodge's favorite, Adobe Creative Cloud. We are so thrilled that we have this. She is teaching a class that's Adobe Creative Cloud, where she has students, um, about twenty students, and they're. I think they're learning about five or six basic apps, 
and then she will want them to work with teachers in other disciplines to utilize that. So this is a great thing. I have been attending her class and learning those apps as well so that I can answer questions and help. I don't think I'll ever be as expert as Martha Dodge is, but it certainly um, helps a lot because now I can answer basic questions. And they're more um, than just apps. They're actually like on industry the, standard. Yeah, this industry is standard on the computers. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually saw a little glimpse of where that work is starting to pay off. Working with um, Mrs. Gerard's Spanish class, the kids are making mm -hmm. T-shirts with the vinyl cutter um, that we got from a GEF grant last year, which is amazing. And one of the students wanted to um, use an image that they got off of Google Images. And I tried to import it into the, the software that we use for the vinyl cutter. And long story short, it had a background and I couldn't. So I couldn't cut the image how they wanted it. And I'm like, well, if you can pull it up in Photoshop, remove the image, save it as a JPEG, the size, send it back to me. And he was like, no problem. And I was like, because normally what? that's something that I would say, I, no. I, I, I'll, and often, I know too much. oftentimes what happens is I end up doing those after the fact and right. it's like, uh, I'll get it back to you tomorrow. Um, but the student, he was like, nope, I got it. And sure enough, he went over to one of the Macs in my lab he did it he had it back to me in less than five minutes and I was like and then I was like did he do it right and he did <laughs> it, so that's where it's we're seeing it so I'm worried about the kids doing it right um, I'd be like right. what you yeah you to do what and we're quick. using spark yeah uh, isn't that part of it yes spark yeah. is part spark yeah. so we yep. just got spark down um, so I'm yeah. starting to use that the 30 ish percent not using school mm -hmm. what are they doing or, not, no. or they're not necessarily or. making it digitally. They will take paper, mm -hmm. most likely. Yeah. No one else is using any other Schoology equivalent, I believe, in the right. middle high school. And we yeah. use Google Classroom. Right. And I'd say half the teachers are using yeah. that. Mm -hmm. The lower grades is not really appropriate. Right. So, right. Right. Um, so I started, I gave you a little glimpse of that <laughs> t-shirt project, which is amazing, um, which you'll see pictures of. They're going to, they're finalizing everything tomorrow. So we'll publicize some yeah. photos tomorrow. Um, but one project, I talked about it the last time I was here, but I wouldn't give any clues. As I didn't want to, you know, share exactly what the project was because it was with the seventh grade enrichment class um, who was focusing on uh, math MCAS prep during quarter three. That was their overarching objective. Um, and what they ended up doing was going through a digital maker, um, digital, not makerspace, digital escape, escape room, room um, solving math equations that they had to solve in order to get to the next room, to the next room, to the next clue, to the next clue. And one thing kind of led to another. And they had to figure out by the end of it um, that they were built, they had to build a pyramid. So now they had to figure out mathematically how to build a pyramid. They were given through a series of clues. They had to in figure riddles. out in riddles. <laughs> They're riddles. She was an expert at writing riddles. I, I learned really that about her uh, during this process. I was not so good at it. She nailed it. Um, they figured out their materials were um, mini marshmallows um, and oh, um, toothpicks. toothpicks and they had to calculate how many toothpicks they were going to need and how many marshmallows they were going to need. and how many by how many and oh going goodness. up into a pyramid um, and before they could actually get their materials they had to show the proof they couldn't just say I need 384 our first question back to them was how do you know you need 384 and they had to explain to us how they got and why they needed it um, and they had an absolute blast and they built these pyramids um, they ended up getting into it. They begged for extra days so that now they could so um, cool. put like mummies inside the pyramids <laughs> and hidden jewels and stuff. And um, <laughs> then they made videos. Um, they ended up do, ending the project with a skit. Um, and for the their, ELA part. For the ELA portion of it. Oh, and cool. their pyramids were like front and center and they made um, some basic costumes and headdresses and they were running around the middle school filming these things for a few days. Uh, and it was awesome. They had a blast. Um, they're like begging for their next like project, project, which was awesome. And all along, we were kind of you know, smiling as they're doing all of these rigorous math, math problems because they were having fun. They were smiling and giggling and it was really awesome. Having a blast. So 
And having that kind of MCAS en enrichment that is MCAS related, it's not specific curriculum where you have to cover certain things, mm -hmm. it allowed that kind of flexibility for us to really go anywhere. So we used a pyramid because we wanted to connect to something they've already learned and they already talked about that in their social studies class so it made perfect sense to do that way yeah. these are just some general pictures um, try to find pictures of kids using individual uh, materials or equipment um, in the makerspace just to highlight like the wide variety of things that we do have available um, the hands that are bl glowing in blue on the left was pretty awesome that was a piece of a project where um, the error of good feelings yeah. in Mr. Larson's class. They had to uh, determine if the error of good feelings was good or bad. Mm -hmm. And this one group decided to 3D print hands and make little blocks of all of the events within that error and make like a scale on which hand was higher. And they you were able to visually see um, that they felt that it was good because there were more blocks of events on the good side than the bad side. But that was a history project that they ended up, you know, 3D printing using hand tools to drill into the, into the hands themselves, um, sawing, making bricks, engraving in the little pieces of wood. It was remarkable. And, and Mr. Larson said, he's like, I usually do a paper. Hmm. And this was amazing. So, so that's just like a little bit. There's another slide of photos as well. Again, more kids. There's a French project. They studied Moroccan art. They utilized the maker space to create their own Moroccan art. There's some pyramid building pictures. There's a skit up there of them doing the pyramid. Yeah. The the T-shirt project was starting in the top right hand corner the other day when I started when I did the slide. Um, I'll get more pictures there. Um, the Root Robotics bottom right hand corner. Uh, we got those off of a MassQ grant that arrived a few weeks ago. So the kids are diving into um, the Root. And yeah. This is being modest. She was awarded a MassQ grant. No. For her, so no. Which was grant, competitive. We were yes, lucky. Competitive grant, so congrats oh, we to were her. Lucky. Yeah, Liz has yeah, lots of grant excellent. writing skills for sure. Yeah. Well, that, the, the MassQ one, I, I've applied for it for a few years now. So I was I was happy when I yeah, got that. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> got Can it. You speak yeah. to the. I mean, I, I love the idea of like air of good feelings. Mm -hmm. I, like speaks to me certainly. Can you speak to the depth? Because there there's there's something to learning about the history and and the context and everything. How much of that still happens with the makerspace and not makerspace the this aspect of it because. I would imagine two years ago they weren't making hands and, and 3D images and, and all that stuff. How much of the content, is any of the content lost or is any time lost as a result? Do you know what I'm I, Yes, I do. I would say that there's no content loss. Um, if anything, more kids are having a moment to understand and comprehend the meaning of the content. Um, we're so quick to rush through content, 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 because we have a timeline. Um, but it's only as good as the delivery and the understanding of the content on the backside. If the student is not able to not only explain but articulate themselves or demonstrate their knowledge, then what good is it at it's the end like of the day? It's almost like project-based, where it you're is. learning exactly. through the project as well as understanding what you're doing, whether it's being a lecture, but mm -hmm. you're actually involved in it. And a good pi picture, I think to summarize, there's a picture up there of students, um, they made a Rube Goldberg machine and they had to define um, and show examples of eight different types of energy transfers. And um, students were tested on the knowledge, right? And students will vary in their grade on, on a formal assessment. Um, and so a group of students were given another alternative to demonstrate their knowledge because they're like, we know it. Well, according to the assessment, we're not sure if you know it, so show us. And it was a challenge that the science teacher, Ms. Fogarty, gave to these students. Well, demonstrate your understanding of energy transfer. And they created a Rube Goldberg machine. And it was remarkable. And the second I started the conversation, but once they got where I was going with it, it was like 
Mr. Woolley and I just kind of stepped back. And within the long block, they pulled everything they possibly could from the makerspace to demonstrate this is kinetic energy. This is how we can show it transferred to this energy, to this energy, to this energy. And then they, um, a couple days later, Ms. Fogarty came and watched it actually with a big group of students and some of the administration. And they explained it. They were able to articulate themselves. And Mrs. Fogarty was speechless at the end of it. She was like, this is amazing that she's like, I had no idea. <laughs> so like, they had learned the content yeah. well enough. Now they're applying it. Now right? they're applying that's it. That's the point, right? right? Yeah. So they're not, they're not not learning content. It's just that mm -hmm. they're either learning it in a hands-on way or they're applying what they're learning in a hands-on way. It's more than memorization of facts because you have it's to actually. It's harder to do, actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, project-based should be about application yeah. rather mm -hmm. than because yeah. you can have someone deliver. I was thinking about a project I wanted to, to do with my students and I could do a lecture in a day and talk about all of that, but I'm not going to have that kind of retention. So, mm -hmm. the the Moroccan project was another good one, <laughs> where they could um, they could have memorized the elements of Moroccan art and set examples, right? But then when they had to actually create it, I was like, well, what makes that? Where where are the elements? What are you showing me? And it was kept going back to them and like, well, uh, okay, oh, uh, okay, and they kept refining what they did until they finally got. An example and a prototype. They went through several prototypes before they got their final outcome, and then they were actually be like, "This is it because of this, 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 this." So. I'm not sure if this is part of Michael's question, but some people might say, "Well, so there, you have a certain amount of curriculum you have to cover, right?" And these things are phenomenal, and they they're at an application level in room, rooms taxonomy, but they take more time. So, th is there any? Is there any issue with certain kinds of parts of the curriculum maybe not getting taught because and that's well, but is yeah, that part of that, it? That is because if you would spend a week on the air of quick feeling, and you're doing this stuff which is great, mm -hmm. but there's still a week's worth of content. Is there? I mean, the year's only so long. The magic mm -hmm. there is for the to, for the teacher to change how they're delivering the content. It's they have to deliver the content through the project, mm -hmm. not before the project, and then we do a project. Right. And we are just starting this mindset change about how do you deliver content through a project, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it, it's a change that I would we're, imagine teachers still block out how long they're going to spend mm -hmm. on a particular unit. Yeah, but mm -hmm. they may they may they may not do some activities the way they did them in the past because they're not going to get as much value. They'd rather take the two or three days and do something that's applicable. But I. I, I think what I, what we're hearing is the teachers still make sure they co they cover the standards in their curriculum. It's really the instructional delivery that's different. They're still like even if they're assessing you, they're getting assessed in a different way. If the teacher gave them an actual paper and pencil test on that content, the goal would be that they'd still be able to show their understanding in that mm -hmm. format too. Mm -hmm. is, is that correct? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just started talking about like. Uh, Universal Design for Learning yeah. in, our, in our admin yeah. team meeting. And this is very, this is kind of the, you know, we're going to dive into that probably in earnest next year and, and many years after. But this is kind of the precursor to that is like, can we give all students, regardless of how they learn best, the opportunities to show mm -hmm. what they know and give them the, give them the options to, to really play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. And for some students, that's sitting down and writing an essay or taking a, a test. And kids for are other still stu doing that. Right, yeah, for other students, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's you know, just another way that, that they can show mm -hmm. that, they, that they've got it. Mm -hmm. But like in, in third grade today, when we were doing hopscotch, it's our second day, like every, the teacher and I and the students were realizing Oh, you have to really read those directions. It just kind of helps in overall, and it's a project, but it's different. It's not, this isn't being graded. Just the whole thing is project-based, and it's taking time to get through all of that and understanding um, that you have to keep trying. Oh, debug, we'd say bug, bug, and they'd have to fix the bug and work as a team. So all these other things are happening that it's related to the mm -hmm. curriculum, but they're learning these other skills. And it's hard to assess a, a it project. Is. It's very hard to assess a project because how can you tell somebody that their Moroccan piece of artwork no, but is not good? But if they have good. the elements, you're assessing But if they have the elements, elements <laughs> that's where the hard part is, is they have to justify what they did. And this, this was the whole focus, actually, of the commissioner's recent gathering of everybody in the world at UMass Amherst because his 
full con his full message is it's really about rich, deep learning. It's no longer about coverage. Now the problem is they have MCAS that people worry that okay, now what you're saying makes sense. We agree with you. We're but then you're that. you're you're you know, you're still assessing kids on this paper and pencil test. I guess the assumption that we make when we do this is that there's gonna be more learning. And as long as teachers are exposing the students to the way kids are going to have to take the test, right? Because there'll be a disconnect. If everything's project-based and then kids are assessed in a certain way, a certain question types, and we never expose them to that, that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's finding that balance. Because I'm sure there's still a traditional teaching mm -hmm. happening in, in much of the content. It's just where it makes sense, they're finding ways. And the nice thing is, it's not them forcing it, it's the teachers and the kids asking for it. That, that's what I think is the, the shift we, we're looking for. It's just a different way of, of a mindset, but the, this is what the D, DESE is pushing. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna hear a lot more about this because this allows kids at any disability level, any academic level to either stretch high or, you know, everybody gets to stretch and they can tap into you know where they can tap into it, mm -hmm. right? That's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah. quickly. Uh, you are already familiar with this, so we're not talking about the project oh, yeah. itself, right. um, a whole quarter of it. Uh, but I wanted the reason we brought this up is um, technology really is a tool. So what you do with that project-based learning, all of that is what we're striving to do. But we use technology to make that happen. And um, service learning, voter registration drive being one of those projects, utilize technology on pretty much daily basis with students. It utilized technology to organize the project. So we used Sign Up Genius, we used Schoology and things like that. Websites, um, creatively, where students used um, iMovie, they used uh, Adobe Photoshop to represent whatever message they wanted to present. Um, we utilized um, social media, obviously, to advertise it. Uh, students came up with their um, special accounts that I believe ended up, some, someone blocked them on Georgetown News, I don't know why. <laughs> so, um, because they were no, they couldn't identify a person behind it, so they had to go and, and publish things under their own name. But they used all levels of technology. And service learning is something that Liz and I also want right. teachers to yeah. try and do. It's important. We have more and more projects where teachers are coming up to us and wanting to brainstorm ideas. Mm -hmm. And one of them, I don't have much on this because we're just in the brainstorming, but Eric McCarthy um, in the Compass Room would like to do a service learning project with his kids. And I already met with um, two of his students and to him that would involve um, trying to make um, significant language change that you will hear more about when they're ready to talk about it. But it's exciting to see kids yeah. getting um, involved. And they've started to use technology in this particular case. It's Google um, part, but, but they're doing it. So um, service learning and technology go hand in hand. They do. <coughs> all the tools. These are all, <laughs> all the tools. Not all, but uh, some <laughs> highlights. So just quickly on this one, um, what do we do to promote technology? A lot of things. Um, you see the monthly um, tech integration specialist recaps. We have a blog that is still a work in progress, but we're trying to figure out the workflow on that. Um, we're doing professional development whenever we have a chance, both on a formal and informal basis. Um, we've made it a goal to make sure that we meet with everybody. Um, the first semester so that we can continue those really building those relationships throughout the year and supporting whatever it is they need um, G Tech consulting we have those kids and there's already some sophomores and juniors that are asking to be in it for next year which is great do you all know how that works the G Tech, G -Tech. You know that is? I do. yep so um, G Tech is basically um, Student tech support. Yeah, it's yeah. student tech support, but it's those but, tech but it's savvy great kids. Because they, they, they get very smart. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's, it's you know it's also a, they're a resource. Yeah. They are. Yeah. yeah. But is it a course? Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. Yep. Um, and I gave Vega is 
you know, probably the highlight for this year. Um, he's a senior graduating, um, and he's he's just amazing um, yes, yes, with the support is. that he provides to both teachers, he myself, and Pembroke students. I week. send him over yeah. to Pembroke. Yep, yeah. he took yeah. He's my computer yesterday. Yes, he did, <laughs> and he took on my. Um, I did it at Pembroke for years, um, the sphere of the robotics stuff for the enrichment program over there. And this year I just, there, I couldn't do everything. So I, I asked Gabe if he would be interested and got him through the first session and now he's on his own and it's amazing. And he's teaching the little ones. Yep, he's teaching the little ones how to use Sphero, and it's, awesome. yep, it's a definitely a proud moment. Uh, but that's what Dream Tech is all about. Gabe is a good, summary of of G -tech. G -tech. it should be Gabe consultant it, it really should <laughs> That's what the yes, yes. yes um so yeah um we're going to Medfield yeah we're going oh, yeah, to Medfield next that. week which is a professional development that is put out by uh, Medfield Public Schools they open it up to the public um it is called their learning day now it used to be a digital focus learning day where it was similar to MassQ design it was all about technology PD uh, but this year they decided to expand it beyond just the digital aspect of learning um, and include social emotional, um, there's yoga sessions, there's tech stuff, there's stuff related for admins, um, there's stuff for guidance, there's things for every everybody and there's, you know, about 800 people that will attend um, this learning PD day in midfield next week and it's all run by the teachers. Every teacher um, will offer up something that they're an expert in and they'll lead a one hour session and then they'll attend the PD sessions throughout the balance of the day. I like it learning yep. day. I like that idea. Yes. Fine. And the one one last thing, she'll be quick, I promise. Oh just uh, we are Liz <laughs> and I are one. I know this is a it's huge a big one. one. Big investment. We are taking a graduate course at IUMass uh, Boston. It's oh. game based teaching. Oh. And the whole theory is to gamify your curriculum as low tech or as high tech as you wish. Um, and That's it amazing. is definitely a challenge because mm -hmm. we are not used to that as teachers. I yeah, think right. you want to do little games, and I'm not talking Kahoot, no. I'm not talking Jeopardy, we're talking real immersion type of games. Um, this pyramid was one of the examples of something that we've done already, so uh, we are getting excited. I'm doing my, mine is on World War II. So, I mean, who does not like a World War II video game? Um, right? I bet every student I have, but that is my course um, product that I'll be working on. So I'm excited. And hers is on insurance. Yep, it's on insurance. Which Just is, as exciting. Which is yes. super exciting. Ooh, it actually is. War and insurance. Yes. I think we'll make it. It'll be wow. great. I'm excited. We're yeah. high school students. I, I think I I'm going to try you. to test it with my juniors. I think I told either. you I read that book, uh, Marching Off the Map. And, in, yeah. and they're talking about the, the you know, the, how things are different today. Mm -hmm. And one of the things it talked about was schools need to adjust some of the things they do in the classroom. One of them was to create more opportunities for games. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's them from engagement. Oh, yeah, yeah we always. Engage, if, yeah, yeah, that's what they know. Kids, cause their point was that the attention span of kids today is so different than it was, you know, several years ago that you have about six to eight seconds to get their yeah. attention. Right, yeah. and, and unfortunately, it's that's like a pretty quick time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so, not. And, and that doesn't mean everything no. would be done with games, but it's like, is there, you know, what what is it we can learn? Yeah, you know, About to games. find ways to Absolutely. engage the kids with things that and we And Project know. Lead the Way does that, because today Project they were Lead's all right. engaged. Yeah. Yes. Right. For yeah. the whole right. hour it's yesterday. It's like, so schools. engaged. A pathway to engagement. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's yep. really, we yeah. all learn Very better exciting. when we are engaged and interested, and we can find a place where we can, right. you know, we can feel safe in trying and experimenting and learning new things that are pushing yeah. our... Exactly, yeah. And I mean, I, I know there are you know video games that are very helpful and, and great learning tools, and others that maybe not. But I remember right. when my children were young and they played probably a few more video games than you know other people would have <laughs> recommended. <laughs> but but they're now, engineers. But, but, yeah, they're engineering <laughs> right. right now. Yeah. Jeff he right. taught at MIT on, on, on a coding camp on game engine development to kids exactly. from all over the world. And, and now he's got a career as a computer engineer, and he's you know. Yeah. Doing really, really well with it all. So you could only get education into Fortnite. 
Yeah. <laughs> my students were asking me where my husband worked, and I told them Fortinet, which is the name of the company, and they heard Fortnite. <laughs> oh, it was funny. It was really funny. He's the He's a big letdown. Now she just let it go. <laughs> Um, I have one slide just for, for a quick one-to-one <laughs> -one iPad update. Uh, happy to answer any questions that, that, that may come up, but uh, I'll certainly have more to report as we roll out for next year's one-to-one, uh, -one, but just some highlights. This is great. This Congratulations. Is cool. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're 7 to 11 for the one-to-one -one program. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, next year, next year, we'll be fully one-to-one because -one the, the incoming seventh graders that are now in sixth grade uh, will fill out. So this will be... Now, it'll be the first year where we have one grade level that we need to roll into the program as opposed to three the first year, two last year. Next year, it'll just be one, one uh, grade coming up, which is good. Um, one of the changes that uh, we made this year at the, at the suggestion of uh, Liz and Sandra was to do a, um, an iPad Academy tacked on to the end of the seventh and ninth grade orientation days um, to help make the first day and week of school a little easier for students coming in with that new technology in hand. Um, the first year of our one-to-one -one program, there was a lot of catching up and getting things set up and logging into different aspects uh, that took up instructional time on that, on that first week of school. So we said, let's, let's take an hour after the orientation and just kind of knock all of that stuff out while also mentioning to students that you have this technology here's how to use it responsibly. Hey, parents, we want you to be involved as well. Here's your responsibility when this technology goes home. Yep. Um, and talk about digital citizenship and just kind of make sure that everyone's days. ready to go in all fronts when it comes to one-to-one -to -one prior to the first day of school so that we hit the ground running. So that was really successful. Um, and that work did get done for our eighth grade students uh, during that, that first week, but they had already been a year in the, in the program, so it was a little, uh, they didn't have as much to catch up on. Um, a couple just statistics for our participation um, of, of where the program is looking right now. So through, there were, the, remember the different options that families could choose to, to be a part of the one-to-one, -one, they could get their iPad from us. Uh, of the grade levels that are in, 234 uh, students have either purchased or financed their iPads uh, through our program. Um, and 190 of those uh, are already paid in full. So whether that is, I'm going to write one big check or over the course of the two years that people have been in the program, they've, they've paid it off. So we have about, what's that, 44 families that are still paying on a month to month basis or have a payment plan sorted out with uh, our, our um, collection agency fax um, where they're, they're set up and making payments. Uh, we've had very low incidences of, um, you know, lapses in payment or anyone being delinquent and if they are, it's a quick email from me, and they say, "Oh yeah, I got sent a new debit card. I just got to update the, you know, the, the account, and then we're we're good to go." So that's been really really great. Uh, Twenty-two students uh, have received the scholarship um, just based on on their level of need, and Suzanne's been great in getting that set up for for those families. Um, I, I asked Mr. Swaim to give me some statistics on the loaner program from the library because we have a couple of carts and cases of iPads. And he said there were about 20 students who consistently are checking out those iPads either on a daily basis or they're keeping it for a couple days and then rechecking that iPad back out because we wanted to make that an option where getting an iPad your own or you're bringing your own might not have been an option. Um, I would say on the day-to-day -day, there's probably more than just 20 that are checked out right. um, because there are students that may be bringing a Chromebook or they might have a laptop um, but they need an iPad for a specific you know, integrated projects, so then they'll head to the library and, and check one out for Mr. Swaim. So that number's probably a little low on the daily usage, but as far as the, the frequent flyers for the loaner program, it's about 20 students. Um, and I'm happy to report, uh, we just launched uh, 10th grade MCAS Tuesday and Wednesday. It was the first time that our 10th grade uh, did MCAS using iPads. And uh, for the first time, we didn't have to lug uh, carts of iPads from Pembroke over to the middle high school. Uh, big thanks to, to Mike Anderson and his crew for doing that in years past, but I wanted to give them a break this year and hope not to do it, and we didn't have to. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. So uh, on that, those numbers are from Tuesday. Uh, 28 iPads were checked out. 30 keyboards were checked out uh, for 10th grade MCAS on day one. That was much lower on day two 
because students realized that they needed to update their operating system or I didn't charge it well enough on the first day. So they learned from their mistake and we had about half of those uh, the second okay. day. So it's nice to see that of the, you know, required things that we need technology for, the one-to-one -one program is really supporting that as well um, at the middle high school. So when we do seventh and eighth grade MCAS uh, two weeks from now, uh, we're gonna try again not to, not to bother Penbrook's iPads because they're using them on the daily to prep for their own MCAS. So we don't wanna put anyone out. We have the machines and the technology um, either from our one-to-one -one program or from uh, kind of our reserves to loan out. So we're looking pretty good on that front. So the 20-ish being checked out, is that sort of the opt-out? Is that yeah. a fair? Yeah, I think. Um, so that's like for a grade. Yeah, yeah. Probably, you know, probably mostly ninth graders, Yeah, I would say, because yeah. that was one of our issues when um, eighth grade or seventh graders, we had only one person who opted out, I yeah. think. With ninth graders, it was more. So that's it. Seniors, I don't think. Was that just because it yeah. was we started earlier with them and they didn't? We did have the first year we did it was seventh graders. We did have a, a higher percentage of kids right. opt out. Yeah. So right. maybe that's the group you're talking. I about. don't know why. I don't know if they used it as much in eighth yeah. grade oh, maybe. at that point that they thought maybe we don't need it. We'll just borrow it. But now everybody's using, using iPad. It. So yeah. now all of the yeah. students know that well, they need great. it. Yeah, in in being the second. Full year, I think the culture is definitely changing at the middle right. high school where it is it is a it is a tool that you need to make sure that you know you're you're you can do what you need to for class, much like bringing your textbook or your mm -hmm. notebook, right? Yeah. It's it's the tool that you got to bring. Um, so going into year three next year, I think uh, we'll just continue to see that trend and have fewer of the the opt outs. And we really want to encourage families, parents um, to. So you get their iPad through us because we'll continue to offer that program, um, or or make sure that they're they're bringing their own iPad because we're seeing the successes when every student when we're truly one to one. Uh, teachers have an easier time getting through their lessons. They can prep better. They can troubleshoot easier because they need to know one operating system as opposed to two, three, or more. Um, or Paper asking list. or asking students right. to you know take instructional time out to please go check one out from the library, right. and then they got to play catch up. So. Um, you know, once we'll continue to see that that culture shift, and it'll be you know a, a better opportunity for for all of our courses. Wow. And one more question on the iPad. Sorry, I'm, I'm so back when we were <laughs> three years ago, we were yeah, guessing or anticipating kind of a three-year lifespan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that still so theoretically, the seventh graders, this is year three coming up. Are what is our expectation on? the then 10th graders right well they need to upgrade what are we seeing in reality in terms of the apps and all that stuff yeah are we so anticipating them needing to, to so do upgrades? realistically i mean i'm the ipad that i'm using on the daily is, is four years old and, and I'm, it's fine and that's actually the same ipad that we're using for the loaners uh, mm -hmm. it's the, the previous generation um and they're still definitely viable functional you know we just had to retire one of the the second generation iPad cart this year, and that was like from 2010-ish, or right. no, they were old. Yeah. Um, so we will certainly offer when those seventh graders get to 10th grade that, that they can be a part of that program again, either through us, but realistically, those iPads will probably still be, still be good, um, especially since every year they update the iPad, it, it, it gets a little more beefier and, right. and a little more powerful. Um, but certainly we will, we anticipated a three-year lifespan. But I didn't anticipate with so many families purchasing in full. Oh, yeah. So and half of them did it on their own. Right. If you can assume there are five hundred right. odd kids. Right. And so, um, so the paid in full, I think, was was kind of a a, a wild card for me um, because we anticipated that you're going to pay monthly. You know, you're twenty dollars a month for three years, and then by the end of that three years, you can trade it in for a new one. But the ones that they have are mostly already theirs already. So. And they usually last a lot longer than what they're expected mm. to. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, these kids will go all through their they high might, school years yeah. with just that one iPad. Yeah, and, I, and just for the, the for the one to one program, we're obviously going to target the incoming seventh graders, but we'll continue we'll we'll continue to offer the option for the one to one for mm -hmm. for anyone because we might have some students last year that figured that they would bring their own, but maybe it was an iPad Mini and they're realizing that's not the greatest tool for them, so they want to get in on on one of the school's iPads. So we're gonna to continue to offer it school-wide, focusing specifically on the grades that 
you know, are in the program now. Mm -hmm. okay. wow, that's wonderful. Great. And we all got our grants. Yeah, GEF yes, grants yes, come GEF in. Came in. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's fantastic. They're funding all of the grants. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. Or was that the Yes, and Liz got, Liz got uh, yep, she got recognized for the Golden Apple. Golden Apple. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay. That's yes. right. With Terry Brooks. With Terry Brooks yes. from great. Pembroke. Yes. Yeah, it was real. They surprised them with balloons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Liz, Liz who's not easily surprised, was surprised. <laughs> when I was, she's like, I can't believe it. I never get surprised. <laughs> well, well deserved. wonderful. Congratulations. But I'm so, I'm so glad you all came tonight and you you. Know, had an opportunity because this is exactly what we had hoped when we first conceived of this. And it was a bit of an adventure and it was right. a bit of an experiment, but the right people you know, are, are in the job here. So we want to thank you very much for all you do. Thank, thank you. Yes, very thank exciting. You. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. For your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank Mind you, boggling. It's just like the nature of education. <laughs> it's changing. Changing. Yes. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye, ladies and gentlemen. In a very good way. <laughs> Can't wait to see the gaming. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to go watch your classes, Anne. I, you know, I could love to go in and just see the technology, technology in the classes and how they're using it. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, now we have Principal Richards here. We're going to talk yeah, about a few things going up. Your neck going on at the high school. He's talking about. I love his proposal. Very exciting. Yeah, me too. So interesting. I mean, that's really like <laughs> it is interesting. It shows everyone have such passion. What education on the ground is looking yes. like now, yes. and it's I agree. it's fantastic. Exciting. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, How are you? Tonight and talking to us. Oh, no problem. Good stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, a lot going on. Yep. Um, the, uh, you received my memos on the uh, couple of changes that were generated to students and teachers. Um, and I do want to emphasize that these uh, um, recommendations are through conversations with students and teachers about what if, what if type of conversations and then bring them all together to have that conversation. The conversations were guided with um, to remove all the obstacles is what I've told them. Let's be creative and let's think differently and let's not talk about the obstacles and logistics in place and we can figure those out. And so let's be creative. So uh, through the conversations with students mainly was mid-year exams and they talked about um, can we do it differently because of what they go through during the mid-year exam week, which is maintain their classes while at the same time study for exams. So they feel as if they're in two different worlds. And I said, well, let's talk about this. And uh, I pulled a group of students together, opened it up to the school uh, for anyone who wanted to be part of the discussion. It wasn't a set committee that uh, we elected. It's open to everyone at all levels. Um, all academic levels and all teachers and we uh, filled the room uh, we actually had to cut it off a little bit because kids were still volunteering <laughs> and our wow. first discussion was um, I was the facilitator um, I simply just guide the conversations recorded on the board and I let it go wherever it's gonna go and I made sure they knew that was my role so through their discussions, uh, we talked about the mid-year exam week and the stress that they were under being one foot in each world and what can we do differently. And the teachers actually had the same concern, one foot in each world and maintaining the classes while doing the exams and the stress that they go under as well. It was really a great conversation because they had more similarities than differences. As a matter of fact, they had, I don't think, any differences. And it provided an opportunity for each side to hear what they both go through. And so they came up with this idea of having just a mid-year exam week without scheduled classes where students would show up just for their exams and they could focus on the exams and um, it would be a lot less stress. And of course, they uh, throw it back at me, but Mr. Richards, this supports your social emotional learning <laughs> initiative. And I said, you're absolutely right. Uh -huh. and so, um, and that discussion happened quickly. They really, it was one meeting and we were done probably in about 45 minutes with a consensus and a recommendation. Um, so I'm happy to say that teachers and kids came together with this idea and that's what you see here. 
with the extra time, they threw in a few other topics. Um, <laughs> they said, now that we've done that, can we talk about senior exams and AP exams? And I said, absolutely, but you know, let's have another meeting for that and open it up to other students and other teachers to be part of that. And especially the AP exams, we want to make sure the AP teachers are there uh, to speak to that. So we concluded with the uh, mid-year exams being uh, just a, a week, being just exams. Uh, they don't have to focus on classes. And um, yeah, that's where that topic landed. The oh, and they can leave. Hmm. Yes. Yep. So they that's have options the during difference. the day. Mm -hmm. They can go to the library or they can go to the cafeteria or they can leave school. And if a parent uh, wishes to have their student at school and doesn't want them to leave for whatever reason, they can just simply write a note and you know, we'll honor that and communicate that to the student. Um, but uh, the parents that I talked to as well said you probably won't get many of those notes because we're also yeah. looking for this de-stressor as well. My school council uh, definitely uh, pinpointed on that uh, yesterday. And so um, big support by students, kids, and uh, you know, students, teachers, and parents. So we had a, uh, another announcement out to the school uh, about senior exams and uh, everyone was invited and a lot of juniors and seniors, uh, I think they have a vested interest in what's gonna happen to them a few weeks down the road and next year. And t a lot of teachers showed up as well. Uh, again, we filled the room. And again, I was the facilitator for the conversation. I let the conversation go wherever they were gonna take it. And they were talking about their senior exams and making sure that uh, their voices were heard and the voice was loud and clear on both sides again that it should be an open campus for them as well. Um, if they want to go to the library, they can. If they want to go to the cafeteria, they can um, or leave campus. And that was uh, another quick meeting actually. It was about 45 minutes and they were all in agreement with it and the same thing with the uh, school council. So they wanted to jump into another topic, the <laughs> AP exams. And I said, let's hold off on that one until we can get the AP teachers. And again, the same process. Um, the, uh, I think uh, hearing both sides in the AP exam is really interesting because the AP exam is cumulative and it's everything that they have learned in the exam. And students are required to take the exam when they have an AP course. So why are we having a final exam? Mm -hmm. And the teachers actually said the same thing. And they then revealed, well, I kind of do this and I kind of do that. So there are things that have been happening over the years and I think we just threw it on the table and everyone felt safe to say I haven't really been given an exam or a version of an exam. So let's call it what it is. If teachers want to do projects, if teachers want to do presentations or they want to deliver more content beyond the AP exam and just test on that content, then that would be fine and everyone was in agreement with that. So this is how these conversations all kind of uh, percolated to the top. They were student-led and teacher-led. Uh, my role was just a facilitator, and uh, in all three of these uh, open campus versions, uh, there was 100% consensus on it, and with the, uh, um, the school council as well. So, so Dan, I'm just the only thing I'm just curious about is, so it was consensus of people who were there, but how, right. how, how, how is that passed on to the whole school? Like, so like what if there are people yeah. who disagree that just didn't come to the meeting? It's kind of like if you show up, your voice gets heard. I, I, we all agree on that. But I'm just curious, you know, how other kids and other teachers have been informed. Of so we put on the announcements that will be a discussion yeah. uh, about it, and it went over the announcements, all of them did, and uh, it was communicated out to the school uh, right. several days before a meeting happened. But do they know what came out of the discussions? Um, I think informally they do. I mean, the students have talked and teachers have talked, but I haven't released anything at this point. Uh, this is the meeting I was waiting for before I release anything. Okay. Uh, so I'll probably do that on Monday and uh, release these uh, bullets I have on here. I can't imagine that many students would object. No, <laughs> students won't object. I mean, yeah. maybe I'm missing but something. I, 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 yeah. I yeah. Parents, parents, will, be there, parents will have questions. Parents. Yeah. 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 Will I know that we've yeah. talked about this open campus, yep. campus for a Probably. couple of years on it. I, yeah. I, I think it's great because I don't know why, you know, the kids you have to sit there and walk, you know, in their other classes when they don't have an exam going on. And meanwhile, they could be, you know, better at home doing that or you know in the library or whatever but um, I'm sure the concern would probably be transportation things like mm -hmm. that or 
you know, yeah. putting the buses into trouble, really and schedule, yeah. you know, things yeah. like that. But I think the majority of schools now do open campuses. Absolutely. We are the minority right now, but the majority do this type of version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, so what would the exam schedule look like? So it would be five days. So each day you might have... What, like a block, a block. Or, block mm -hmm. or something like that. I think that's so what how I envision it, uh, how other schools have done it, and uh, we'll have to work that out to make sure it matches up with the buses, is there'll be a first exam, uh, and that could be, we have to talk about the logistics of, is that all English? And do we free up the English yeah. teachers so they can go to all of their classes to assist their students? So that's a version that we yeah. could do. Mm -hmm. We could do by block. Um, that's a version as well. So I'd run the logistics past um, my department heads and get their feedback on it and see how that looks. The good thing about it is they're focused on two, maybe three exams a day at most, three, yeah, that's but probably say, two. Period. Right. So if you uh, did it by subject, uh, I want to get the feedback from the department heads on that. And um, there's a benefit to that. Um, English teachers went proctor on an English day. They would float between all their classes, support the kids who need support, um, answer questions. Uh, so that's one advantage. And the other one is more of, um, you know, by block, it kind of keeps it in a system that we're used to. But uh, I think people are looking to actually break the system that we're in and do something different. So we'll see where that lands. So would that look like five half days for that week? Uh, the uh, mid-year exams are usually the MLK week, which we have Monday off, okay. and we only need four days for exams. But I might, is this true, Dan, I might have on um, Tuesday, I might have, like in college, right, I might have one exam, but then I wouldn't have to be in school the others. I might have two exams the next day, maybe one in the morning, one in the afternoon, so I could choose to stay. Right or I could leave between my exams. Mm -hmm. But you're only required to be on the campus when you actually yeah. have an exam. Right. exam time. Mm -hmm. and, and what implication contractually for the teachers does this um, impact? It's a work day for the teachers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they right? Full days, it, it, even though they don't have classes. Well, it sounds like they would be preparing for exams, mm -hmm. proctoring exams, correcting exams. They're, they're still required to give an exam to every one of their classes, right? In addition to that, um, there's a huge window for helping kids. Now kids can go and actually get help before the exam and between yeah. exams, so they're still working with students. Uh, and that's a, a big advantage to the going in this model. So that would be something that would be communicated to the kids yeah. that, yeah. okay, you, know, you can, can stay up during study. your teacher mm -hmm. in the you library. You can set up an appointment with a teacher to, yeah. yeah. But to your to your point, if, if English is Monday morning or Tuesday morning, if it's that week, what do the English teachers have? I mean, obviously they're coming to work, but, but they don't have any classes, they don't have any students for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. They'll be proctoring. Um, they'll, we have to swap off the proctoring, so they could be proctoring a math class and a science, I should say exam, and, and a science exam. Uh, meeting with students, correcting their exams, there's still plenty of work uh, to keep them busy. And that would be the expectation that working with students, now that they have that window open, preparing them for the exams. Teachers who teach middle school and high school, though, the middle school is still there. It's, yes. it's, right. it's just, this is just mm -hmm. 9 through 12. Right. Yep. So there, there still would be you know, middle school classes yep. that they might have to teach if, they sh if they're right. shared staff. And there are logistics we have to figure out, but I wanted to, re we can, figure those out. Um, I just sure. wanted to remove the obstacles from the room and get the creativity thinking and this is what they came up with and I'm sure we could work with um, how do we uh, schedule shared staff with middle school and high school. We'll have to look to coverage and the middle school middle school is still operating. Um, so. so when are we looking to implement this? So our seniors this year. <laughs> and so for the senior exams so then the other kids and for the APs? And then uh, uh, 2020 for the mid-year mid exams. Year. So oh, we yes. are going to do the finals this year. Yes. For, wow. for the seniors. For the seniors, yes. Yeah, for the seniors. Yeah. But I'm Within reading at that campus. the other kids, when is the week of senior exams? Students? No, senior exams, I'm, isn't, don't we already have an open campus for seniors? Well, what, well, sort of. So what happen, I think what happens now 
is parents have to sign a note that basically says their children can leave. It's kind of like so. It's an opt-in. It's this, an this, opt-out. Right, this, this uh, is uh, your your child can leave yeah, so, yeah. unless you say so you, they yeah. can't. Right. So I think that's the, <laughs> that's the most significant change, I think. Mm. But yeah, when Dan set this up, he set it up like that would be this year, and then so 2019 the senior exam, and then 2020 20 would be the mid term exam. Would DAPs be this year? This year as well. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I wish we could do something in terms of when the senior exams occur. It just seems that this. You know the other grades seem to have a lot of downtime. Do you? Well, you haven't. Well, I haven't seen gone it through it yet. yet. <laughs> you know that when the seniors have their exams, it seems like the underclassmen have a lot of downtime because they because don't of that. Have the it just seems like they're in they like go to like study. Hall. They they do a lot more of like study halls or not oh. so much as What's classroom. Because those um, teachers are more focused on the. On the seniors, yeah. Then. Do you find that like have so? Your kids so wouldn't they still education? teach all the classes they're required to? It's just during senior exams, the kids would take their senior class. They would take an exam. Is that not true? They just uh, during senior exam week is just senior exams, and that's it. It wouldn't be right. running. So I see the kids are in a class right. if you, if with seniors. Yeah. If you have a if you that have a junior still, senior mixed class. classes would still run. That we have juniors and seniors in uh, electives, those classes still run. So the juniors would still have their scheduled class. But the the academic class, the the general ed classes, like a science that would have, you know, mixed grades. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think. You know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because that's, if the teacher's proctoring the exam, one or two I classes. I guess that's the question. If the teacher's yeah. proctoring, well, I think all the general ed, like math. They have well, math. who's teaching English. the juniors? Science. They all have like we um, teachers chemistry. don't have to proctor their own exams. Someone else oh, okay. could be proctoring. So they, if a, a teacher of a mixed class could still be teaching their class and then have someone else proctor, proctor. it. Mm. We're just used so to just something teacher to proctoring their own yeah, exams. Point, That'll yeah. be a change. I guess what's the yeah. practical level of if half the class is taking your exam? How much yeah. teaching actual teaching yeah. is happening for the the class mm. that's still there? Yeah. yeah. We can eliminate the what's two things going on in one class through this. So when are the senior exams? The end of the year. Oh, well, the last day for seniors is was May thirty first. Yeah. So. Okay. So. So that last week, that last. Probably the end of May. Yeah. It's the end of May. So when senior exams are over. If folks are just teaching a senior class. Yeah, that happens everywhere. They don't what, have class. They don't have class. So what uh, that happens at all schools, but what we um, do is what I'm told is we make sure they fill in for substituting mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. teachers yeah. and yes, they utilize. Now the thirty first itself is prom. Mm -hmm. right. So would the seniors just would they have exams that morning? I know those are all the logistics. Dan's gonna have to the, work out. <laughs> yeah, the chances are that the majority of the exams will be earlier that week. Okay. And there'll be one, probably one exam, if any, if for a student it. on that Friday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they'll have all day to get ready. The majority <laughs> will. I mean, you're just thinking about Whether where their mind is going to yes. go on prom I mean, day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they take it in now. Well, that's interesting. I'm glad that the kids um, came up with this. I'm glad that you were, you were willing to. Facilitate, and I love when the minds go, and you know the kids like being heard. You know, Absolutely. so the fact that it's actually coming to fruition, I think, is great. Mm -hmm. yes. And that you got a lot of students involved. Yes, right. yes. I, yeah, momentum yeah. has picked up, and I think I have a feeling there's going to be other topics thrown my way, which is fine. Uh, we'll just facil facilitate those and go forward. Uh, and also, we're kind of double dipping on this. It's one of our NIAS requirements to make sure that student and teacher voices are heard in the school. Um, so. Kind of double dipping on this. Good. Yeah. Give yes. everyone the opportunity, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. No, that is. That's great. So, Junior Hi. Honor Society, yeah. Dan. So, that was yeah. our discussions, and probably more to come. We want to do forever. <laughs> and this, uh, I'm really happy to say that we're, um, we have started the first uh, uh, middle school National Junior Honor Society um, starting this year. And um, it's uh, in alignment with the National Honor Society. Uh, National Honor Society has four pillars. This has five pillars. Um, the uh, fifth one being citizenship. 
and uh, Patrick Gore is going to be the advisor of that. And um, I do have some dates that we firmed up today. I will be rolling this out quickly. So the um, applications will be due the Friday after the vacation, uh, April vacation on April 26th. And uh, there'll be a presentation to students on the 3rd, um, I'm sorry, April 3rd. And then follow-up questions will be available on April 4th. Uh, Q&A, um, Ms. O'Leary, the secretary in the middle school is available for information for parents to get in contact on the 4th. Uh, applications will be uh, in her office and the committee is being pulled together and uh, ready to start rolling on this and the induction ceremony will be in the fall since we just started the program and uh, I thought getting it in before the end of the year would be too much there's a lot going on and I want like to get it right and thoughtful uh, so we uh, moved it to the fall and then next year will be open to seventh and eighth graders and the induction ceremony will probably be in the springtime. Excellent. So when the superintendent said she's been waiting for this for a while, so how, mm -hmm. how many chapters are, I mean, like do a lot of middle schools already have a program like this? A lot of middle, middle schools do have a hmm. program. Um, in the last, I would say seven or eight years has been a surge in uh, schools enrolling. So this isn't that uncommon, uh, but it's new for us and we're excited about it and to get, get it off the ground. Yeah, that's I mean, great. I think there's always been a, a question at the middle school about, you know, is it, you know, do we have expectations of the students, right? So, you know, we have an academic curriculum, right? We, we have on, uh, on, on course specials, whatever you call them, you know, which is all part of middle school. So what this does is it basically says, well, let's, let's do something to recognize Mm -hmm. students and I think parents will consider it to, <coughs> to be it'd be a welcome addition because you know there are some students who really go to school and really work hard and you know there's really not much to recognize them right now and this 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 would be you know something worth doing and we do the National Honor Society that's been a long-standing tradition here so this just gives us the opportunity yep. you know to, to build you know leadership in kids and you know, have them be able to put themselves out there. So I, I've, I've always wanted it. We've had trouble getting advisors in the past, and there is a little cost to it. It's not a lot, but there's a little cost to it. And Dan was able to, you know, get it started and get some momentum going on it. And so I'm just really excited to just give it a try and, and see, you know, how it works. So will that be a stipend, or is that going to be coming um, from the middle high school you know, budget? Um, it, there is a there's there already a stipend. a stipend for national Nas honor society. Oh, so it's yeah. so it's not be the same. It would be the same um, stipend. Right. So that would be coming. So that's additional budget well, it would money. Come out of Dan's stipend budget. budget. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a list of clubs and activities that we don't fill them all. This will just be added to the list, but my budget for it doesn't change. Okay. Um, just just they can choose, you know, what we do, and uh, most of the clubs, I'd say. Probably 99% of them were filled this year. Yeah. Uh, as kids requested them with the budget line item that I yeah. have, and this will just fall in that line item, but not in addition to it. Yeah, yeah good. I mean, I, I think great. in the future we may have to think about. We've never we increased that. that we haven't changed that number in a long time. But you know, there have been like there's an interesting um, idea that came forward. Dan asked us if there was any money to to do it. Something that came from um, students. What was that? What was it, Dan? That was, was that? they want to work with sports and building school spirit and community right. service around the, uh, the, you know, the town. And it's a really unique club. It's not a club that meets every Thursday for anime or something. It's, they're, they're active in what they're doing. It's, right. It's more project so, I mean, that's the kind of stuff we want to encourage, yeah. right? So it's like something the, the, but the money the is the money, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think I we know, just going to have to think about that. That is something spirit. that, like, those kids should be referred to, like, the boosters. Exactly. Yeah. Because I, you know, the boosters right. are looking yeah, the for boosters volunteers. are looking for volunteers, yeah. yeah. To help with some things. Well, that's great, happy right? to give community service. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm happy um, about this national, the Junior National Honor Society. I, uh, I look forward to seeing how many kids apply, yeah. apply for yeah. it and then actually, you know, follow through and, yeah. you know, it, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, and the only thing that I was wondering about is a parent piece because, you know, the, the, when the time the kids get to high school and they start applying for it in the junior year, that, you know, they're pretty independent and can pretty much 
know how to do that. Not that you want the parents to be putting the paperwork in for the kids in the middle school, but how are we informing the parents of the process, the criteria? I know we said there was an opportunity to, for people to ask questions, but how are they going to get the information? There's not like a, you know, if you're not doing any kind of parent forum or something, like how, how's that going to work? No, uh, I did talk to Patrick about that, and I um, asked him to think about his audiences, and that's yeah. parents being one, one of, them. of them. So they'll get a notification as well and okay. uh, access the blog, the email, um, and go from there and push that because you're right at that age, uh, the kids may need a push to you apply. Might, yeah, expect or, a little more parent absolutely. supervision yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of the application process. And especially being the first time. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which will help them enormously when they get to high school and sure. you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Be well prepared. Want to yeah. apply right. for the high school mm -hmm. uh, National Honor Society. That's exciting. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Okay. All right. So before you leave, yes. for Richards, I do just want to acknowledge the award that you <laughs> oh, received. Yes, that's oh, yeah. so um, Thank it was you. the first ever award given for the Advocacy Champion of the Year from the National Association of Secondary School Principals. So it was awarded to our principal, Richards, which I was very um, happy to see. So that's National great. Oh, thank and you. All the, and what I loved to see was all the additional comments that people wrote, including yeah. our, our own superintendent saying, you know, you were right on with that, what a great pick, and you couldn't have picked a better person. So that was really impressive. Well, thank you. So congratulations. It's thank you. fun congratulations. work, but that, that was yeah, great. No, Big surprise. Great. <laughs> and was this great like a nomination? Is that, were you nominated? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. through the nomination process. Okay. He didn't know about it. Oh. He didn't know about the nomination. And he knew he was going to the conference. They ambushed me. <laughs> <laughs> it was All right. That's nice. That's nice. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. No, oh, that's great. Well, and you. how was your day on the um, in Washington? Great. Um, I'll be heading back for a quick weekend uh, meet and greet with a, a couple of um, representatives and senators in April again um, on Saturday, actually. Uh, it was great. We um, there's about 130 of us that uh, tackled the hill, and we talked about education reform, um, supporting ESSA, uh, our uh, stories in the gutters of what it means if uh, Title Two A, which is um, funding to support leaders in schools and professional development, what that would look like if it's not funded, and we gave real examples. So. It was great, and the uh, the senators and reps and their aides were always they're always welcoming, and um, and uh, it's great contacts. And they do give me a call and give the other um, uh, coordinators a call when they need a story, when they need something to back up. So it's a great connection, networking, and we're able to support the work. And in Massachusetts, we're lucky enough to have senators and representatives Absolutely. that are great very much in support of education. Mm -hmm. So my job isn't that hard compared to other coordinators in the states where it's a little more convincing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Well, that's good. That yeah. that sounds like a great yeah. day. It does. Too, yeah. A good a good yeah. take. Mm -hmm. So good. Good luck Thank with you, the next Dan. trip out there. Great. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So would you mind Barbie moving school choice up just so that I can have everybody. Home. Yeah, of course. Yep. I talk about school choice for school choice. There's now a lot to talk seventh about. Grade. But right. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, it's the time, right? We've got people calling the office asking, you know, are we going to open any spaces um, already? As always, we have more people soliciting, wanting to come in than we can accommodate because uh, sometimes they're at different grades, you know, then we just don't have space. Um, we did have three teachers uh, who are in the district uh, asked to bring their children starting in kindergarten. So, uh, Margaret, do you, um, if you don't have it off the top of your head, it's fine, but my, Michael asked today, kindergarten for next year, do we have a sense of the, the number? So right now, we're at about 85. 85, okay. Which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but for March, uh, that's, that's pretty I was bad. gonna say, I feel like we're typically in that 80, 90 range, okay. and then. And has there been kindergarten? I know people are registering, but has have there been? Has the kindergarten night happened? Because I no, that's in May. Okay, there, that's in May. it's in May. Okay, because we were talking about that today, so that might yield more, more students. Um, it could. But the kindergarten night is when students typically know about coming to kindergarten. Right. Right. Um, we'll get more obviously through the spring. We will get more in the summer. And then we always get some right before school starts. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, okay. Yeah. So, so we're not recommending any additional kindergarten slots. Right. We're now. not recommending any um, elementary slots, even though you know we still got that bubble moving through. Uh, you know, we just feel like the numbers are not. You know, they're in the twenties, right? And some are moving up toward the mid twenties. So, um, and then sometimes there are different. We look at each class and decide whether or not some grade levels that might appear to have slightly less students. It's, it's not in everybody's best interest to take additional students. Um, usually when you take school choice slots, your number is lower than you're comfortable with, right? If you're, if you're already in the you know, 20, 21, you could say, well, you know, you could take another two kids. But then you really are, you, then if there are two more kids that move into Georgetown, now you're over 25 kids and you've done that to yourself. So we don't tend to do that. We, if we see 16, 17, 18 kids we might say okay well maybe we have room for you know four or five kids but when we start getting to where we are now we just don't recommend it um ninth through 12th so ninth grade is going to be a big class next year so usually that's where we take kids mm -hmm. is in ninth grade so in looking at the enrollment the, the sixth grade going into seventh grade is actually quite small and the seventh grade and eight into eighth grade is reasonable too so when we look at the sort of total number in the middle school um you know, we thought maybe we could take um, students in the seventh grade. For our kids, that's a transition grade. Some other places, it's not a transition grade, right? So they they transition in sixth grade. So we don't know whether there'll be interest or not from the from the public at large. But uh, we didn't base the budget on any school choice slots. However, you know, we do have expenses on that, those accounts. So it's not like we could afford without taking things off of that. It doesn't, it's not like we could afford to, to not yeah, take to kids, not take you know, for, for, for every year. Um, so any kids we do get in are actually gonna benefit us, right? Because we're not dependent on, you know, $50,000 of that money to balance our budget. So I, I'm happy about that, because that's always made us a little uncomfortable, you know, that that's what we've had to do. I'd rather identify a certain percentage of that money to do a curriculum upgrade that's a one, time expenditure or something so um, so we're recommending um, that you know the district continue to accept school choice students and that um, we open 10 slots for seventh graders and not of course not knowing whether we'll get any but we, that's where we feel we have space so when you say so the current eighth grade class is large the current eighth grade class is large. One of them. I mean, large for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah. I think uh, Dan got some um, in initial information from Julia. I think on uh, ninth grade. So there, there mm -hmm. are some kids who have applied to attend school elsewhere, and then there are vocational students. Um, I'd have to pull that up on my phone, um, but I don't okay. believe it was. I think to, I want to say total it was like thirteen kids, but I could. Uh, they're all thirteen, and I have expressed interest. She thinks the. Not sure how many would get in, and that, so that number. Is yeah, it's funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that one twenty. Uh, yeah, that's why we have yeah, yeah, a teacher. Yeah, one twenty. Yeah, that was like Joan yeah. Grace's. Yeah, yeah. 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 that was one fifty. Yeah. That oh, was, that, was, that, was like that was like twins, right? How many yeah. sets of twins? 12. 13. 13 uh, well, originally, and then, yeah, yeah. 12 yeah. sets oh, of twins. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there a, tri there a triplets in that group? But there was moved. a, they, they moved, moved. Okay. but there was. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that was a big class. That, so there were, in elementary school, there were seven, right? Yeah. Of each grade for them. Wow. So we're hoping that's some crazy. of the changes at the middle school, maybe this national junior national honor society, well, you know, a few mm -hmm. of those sure. kind of things, you know, may may be an attraction. Mm -hmm. Have any more discussion before I make the motion? No. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve school choice for 2019, uh, 2020, and to open 10 slots for the seventh grade. So moved. Second. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Not related That's to different. the vote. Yeah. yeah On this. Yeah. yeah. Did we add between FY18 and 19 and the school choice in? Is up 16? Where were you looking? Down here. Um, so 37 to 53. Did we? We don't have 53. Yeah. 
Okay. I, I didn't see that one, actually. So um, I know Nancy collected a lot of statistics. So uh, what, what, is, what are the questions and we can verify the issue? The, so the school choice school in number, choice if in. you look at the total, in 18 yep. we had 30, according to this, we had 37. Yep. In 19 it says 53. Oh, okay. Which it, we didn't have 16. I don't recall. Well, let's see, is the number, do we yeah. add it wrong? It adds right. It adds right. Well, so hmm. the three kindergarten, are those considered school choice or are those? From this. But this the, is 19. Oh, I bet it is. Hmm. Right, but were those kids that entered kindergarten via the contract? I, I don't teacher? believe we can count them as school choice. No. no. Okay, so the, that, that should be zero. <laughs> Right. There, there was a big take anybody. In oh, the right, right there. Oh. What are you, I'm sorry, sure. What are you looking at? I'm trying well, to so the left side. The left side for the okay. K, the FY19. Oh, three. you're still wondering about that. Okay, so let's we'll look at that because we didn't take any school choice other. We than... We did not take any school choice. That would be the teachers', teachers. kids. Yeah. I think the teachers' kids are included in that count. Okay. Mm. That, so that would that. that is a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we don't have fifty three. So how how this gets generated is that I wish it could. Pe pe I, pe I pe have a hard time looking at this. I don't know. I think it, it's, can we do a better? <laughs> way I know. We're trying to figure it out. So much we can do anything you would like. Sorry. I think that the reason it no. it's just a lot of. Well, yeah, you have to follow the diagonal down, right? And it, it's really the numbers at the bottom that are really kind of important. But I think for people who want to know, like, where are the kids? Where are they? You know, the general yeah. information right. is good. If there's a different format, we can certainly look at that. Um, we have I, how this gets generated is, is uh, we'll get these from other districts, too. You know, write down the names of anybody who's, you know, a resident of George, you know, Georgetown that, you know, goes to school elsewhere. And then they, we ask the same thing. If you have any Georgetown kids, so it's just a random collection of emails that go back it's, and forth. It, well, it's a it's a form. Yeah. It's a form that all districts use. But that's how that's how it is. So you you get Roughly that information time. because otherwise, like you said, kids can just disappear. Right. Right. Because they they don't have to tell us. Mm -hmm. They just, they just don't come enroll. Back. Right. Right. So, but this but is interesting with vocational right. schools. But the value of the of the report yeah, is just yeah. that it shows yeah. you how many kids. It's yes. Same, it's same junk, right? yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so we had a dramatic. No, we had a significant yeah. decrease in yeah. vocational. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of kids come back this year. Yeah. Right. Or and then again next year as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe the it's interesting. numbers are yeah. lower. We did, and I know that. Mm. I don't know why, oh, but yeah. Well, that too. Where is River Valley? That's a charter, charter school. school oh, it's a charter school report. Yeah, and your report, right? Okay. Which I didn't think that Georgetown was eligible for that charter school. I don't know. They must have sent us a paper that said they have two Georgetown kids. Mm. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Even if they're not eligible, sometimes places, if they have Except, space, will sure accept, and they usually, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can take a look at this in any way that you want. I, 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 I will look at that. We will look at What's going on this side as compared to yeah. this side? What What's going on this, here? This is grade by grade. They're this they're is the, the same. That it should be the same uh, number. Okay, so 80 gotcha. is 80. I, I see. So it's where this is. I get confused. Like maybe yeah, this should like, be what? in a different page, like the, where they go, and then we could just focus on the yeah, numbers. Whatever way it's going to make it easier right? for you to read. It just seems like there's so much. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot of information. It's, it's, it is a busy um, page. I agree. But I've been looking at this for eight years and saying it every, like, think it twice out now and find <laughs> saying it. <laughs> so, you would think it would so get easier to understand. identify what things you think would make it easier, we, we can take a look at I think doing, so putting, like, it. the schools, the receiving schools and sending schools on a, like, on the back side, maybe. So, so you want so the just the like just this part you want to split it in half. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. We can certainly look at that. Because I think Suzanne, you were thinking your your rationale was the same because you're like, like what's left? Across. Across. Yeah. What's right. going on That's here? What what's doing, going like, on I'm there? Across, and, but you're not. Well, because you can't there's read no across. there's it, no heading. There's mm -hmm. nothing. You know, it just yeah. says you number of students, across. number of students. I'm like, okay, but what right. about that? Yeah. And so it just it just tells you what it tells you grade versus the template that was there before. I don't know, Nancy, if you're. Previous district did it any 
Got it. No district that I've ever seen does this. This is yeah, you're I know. This we're is, the only ones. We're oh. the only ones. Well, I like I like seeing this yeah. because yeah. I mean, this, is real. Information stuff. this is real. This is real stuff. Versus when you go out and talk to the community, right? And they, you know, that they, they do, you know, say, "Oh, this many kids where do go. Where the kids well, go? He, yeah. This mm -hmm. is where they go, mm -hmm. and this is the number." But they, you know, we know have all that. Too. We track all that, right? And you know, we yeah. understand that there are children that uh, or families that choose to. Um, go elsewhere, whether it's another public school or whether it's a mm -hmm. private school or whether it's a um, a vocational school. But yeah. to see it in black and white, it's it's also it's interesting. Also, how they make see trends, there. right? Trends. So oh. you you take a look and say, you know, geez, why, why were there so many kids yeah. going here or there, or you know? And, and I like when the trends look in our favor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it, well, it, it, you know, that's a that's this is the big thing. picture. Versus mm -hmm. the anecdotes you hear, you know, right. or pieces of the picture that right. you hear, you know, mm -hmm. around the sports yeah, fields, the soccer fields, yeah, soccer and fields. And yeah. you know, yeah. where yeah. do kids? What grades do kids leave at? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there, it is one of those things where it does take some time for you to sort of like is it study it and then understand what it's really saying. But yeah. we can, if it's so a formatting really issue, but we, but I think the information, and I think you, I'm hearing yeah. you agree that the information is good to. We like the information. Yeah. Yeah. Do it's like just. It. Yep. Well, so students who are homeschooled, yeah. they're working with all different curriculums. Yes, I'm taking. Jack is the homeschool coordinator, and we usually get the programs too. Jack gives us the programs. Well, we get a we get a name well, a name and a, like a portfolio. Yeah, is yeah, there exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we know. So what, like the, program the law following. the law has certain requirements that you have a, a parent has to disclose. You know, the te who's going to teach it, the qualification of the teacher, how they're going to assess it, the child's performance what they're going to use for curriculum. Um, some are very, very, very thorough and complete. Some are a little mm. sketchier. Um, some participate in like a homeschool collaborative, so they have a certain curriculum. Some have a religious curriculum. Um, but, you know, you're, you're not supposed to withhold, un unreasonably withhold permission as long as they can answer those questions. And then they have to submitted sort of like a little annual report. Some will send these beautifully done elaborate reports with pictures and samples of kids writing. Others will say, you know, here's the results of the, the assessments that we did. This is kind of what it, but it's, there's no standardized process for it. But Dan, <laughs> not Dan, Jack approves all of those and communicates directly with the families as well, to what they have to do. And say they're homeschooled their entire yep. school career. Yep. Is there a high school diploma no. requirement? We do, we do not give them a high school diploma if they're homeschooled. However, we do allow them to participate in our, some of our classes. So like if somebody said, Gee, would you allow us to, our child to participate in, to, to take advanced Spanish? We might consider that, right? Same thing with sports, mm -hmm. right? If you want to play field hockey and you're a Georgetown resident, you might you would have the opportunity to try out for the team. But homeschoolers do not get a Georgetown High School diploma. It, what if they get a GED? The, or, or, or they work through whatever, some go to the you know, schools oh, that are technology. Yeah. Oh, okay. maybe their own diploma yeah. of the system. But believe it or not, the program you know, that they're uh, using. Kids that you know, don't graduate from a, a, a public high school get into great colleges and you know so it, it's, oh they do it's, I, oh yeah oh yeah 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 because because again it's all about the record it's all about what you it's all about you know what you show that you you've done you know, what what background experience the children my have. cousin has a son who is homeschooled and he got his phd in engineering and he's working for right. apple and you can see that we <laughs> you can see that we pretty much have can, you know some of these consistent. some of these families are the same families that have done yes. it for a long time but um you know, it, it is pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So Wonderful. included in the packet too is the Baker Adams um, scholarship process and timeline. So that's yes. that time of year again. It's so that time of year for Cheryl's on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so funny. Oh. We do have a vacation schedule, Sorry. but it might be um, due to my husband's work projects. We might have to push it back. Uh, oh. Oh, it's a bummer. Sorry. 
Oh, yes. the <laughs> you'll oh, you'll get to participate in a big wrap discussion. <laughs> oh, I like that. Well, that's good that it will get there by <laughs> April first because I think we yes. listen to the, what the guidance is saying, and also yes. I think for us too is that the kids need to get it earlier. Mm -hmm. We hope that means that they start working on it earlier and not wait till the, the deadline. Um, but um, April first would be great to get it out, and then we'll get it by the fifteenth uh, of May. So that should be good. Okay, so we'll just have to agree on a a, d a time in between. Well, so we need yeah. So from yeah, the well, it says here the, the five twenty four yeah meets to select recipients. Is that an agreed? Do we all agree on that date? Do we all do we all think that was a good so date? So by five twenty four, I think. I mean, that will give us ample Nine time. And then okay, so we'll okay, we'll have to put something out that we get a um, a doodle out. We doodle. get a doodle on out a Friday. Because I'm trying to think, we d we usually just do it one of the weeks, one of one night during the week, right? Yeah. Right. May. Yeah. Twenty fourth. So when do we we we're gonna night. get them? It's a half Adam's day uh, early release professional <laughs> development. We're gonna get yes. applications for it. Well, well it says by five twenty four. So we'll yeah. send out a doodle to see yeah. who's available. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when, so yeah, that could work out. That seems later to me than we usually do. It does that know. night does not look good for me. But I don't even know. If no, Friday night doesn't look good to me, for me either. I don't even know. <laughs> Friday night doesn't look good. You didn't even know your calendar. No, Friday night looks good to me. I don't, I don't think oh. we've done it on Friday night ever. <laughs> no. So. Barbie, I mean, we might not be able to judge if our children decide to be a part of it. Why? Mm. Convenient. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, well, I, 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 I stepped back last year because both my kids to. were yeah. mm -hmm. in on right. it, and I just and didn't. You, yeah. yeah, I yeah. was just like, it's not fair for me to. It, it's not. Right. I put them at the top. Of interest. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. And they didn't even children. make it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll apply see. for it. Okay, so I will make a motion to approve the Baker Adams Scholarship process and timeline as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we also have the superintendent's evaluation process and timeline. I thought this looked good in terms of the um, the dates that we're looking at. So by uh, so the May 9th meeting, yeah, we would have um, the evaluation, and then we'll also we can do yours at the same do night. the school committee evaluation yeah. that same night. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yes, and just to, I know people saw it, but just to call your attention in, this, in the information for the, school, for the school committee, there's a revised set of mm -hmm. topics for the school okay. committee yes. meetings. Yes. So uh, the ones in bold are the ones that Barbie and I moved, so we, because we, we didn't want to, it was too hard to reschedule a second April meeting mm -hmm. because of April vacation. Right. It would have had to be next week. Right. Yeah. So the April 11th meeting it's canceled. is canceled. So we're not going to meet until the 25th. So after tonight, yeah. we won't meet okay. again until April 25th. Mm -hmm. okay. Do the vacation and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Sorry. Um, so okay, I make a motion to approve the um, superintendent evaluation uh, process and timeline as presented. So moved. Second. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, and I'll also make a motion to approve the school committee self-evaluation process and timeline. Yes. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have, um, let's go to back to old business for a minute just to talk about the revisions to the mail charging policy. Right. So right. So this is really just to having put in writing what the school committee, you approved it with, you know, sort of asking to have a few things to put Tweets. back in. Mm -hmm. So this is really the revised policy with all the, with all the changes that we asked. Mm -hmm. it, it, do, are people in agreement that those are the changes that were requested? Anybody see anything? I think we added back we in that whole thing, thing on yeah, um, we needed to do that. Yeah. Kind of delinquency. delinquency. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just feel it's hard to put that on the child when it's not the you know what I mean? Like preventing a child from participating in 
extracurricular graduation when it's really the parent that is the one at fault. Yeah, yeah I, th I think you know? that we tried really hard to leave the language open. So uh, it's a may take one it's, more. It's a may, you know, as okay. opposed to a will. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's always at the discretion. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's a little gray, but, mm -hmm. you know. You're right. It, it's, it really isn't the, chil the children's decision to pay or not to pay. Right. Yeah. Okay, so no, um, no vote is required on that. Because you already voted. Right. So mm -hmm. the, the new crowdfunding policy, interesting. Oh, that mm -hmm. was a lot of work, I can tell. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Policy GBEBD, crowdfunding yeah. policy. It needed to be done, but I'm, I'm thankful for um, you guys doing all the work. That was a lot. It, the more we worked on it, the more we thought, I know. We don't want a policy because we just want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it um, was very involved. Yeah. Like it, and we went through many drafts <laughs> that needed to be tweaked over and over. It was kind of like yeah. that um, overnight. Um, yes, field trips. Field trip. Right. That was a lot too. It's like, what about this? What, you, like you felt like you had to mm -hmm. hit on every mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. thing that occurred, you know, but y there's a point where you have to just say, okay. More okay. and more districts are putting together crowdfunding policies now yeah, as part nice. of their fundraising policy um, because it's happening and when it happens, it's like, what are the guidelines around it, right? Um, we, we had uh, policies from, I think, four different districts, um, and, uh, you know, most of them are were based off of the sort of the state one or the, the general one we got mm -hmm. from MAS MASC. Um, but some had different nuances, and so I think we picked the one we thought was the most mm -hmm. comprehensive, mm -hmm. and then we pulled Added. in pieces mm -hmm. from, from others. So s we started, first we started with our own policy and then tried to add stuff in, and then we said, you know what, why don't we just take one that we like, and then yeah. make sure the stuff we like about ours is in there, and then the other things. So what were the other districts that you looked uh, at? One was Belmont. Belmont. Milton, mm. Andover, Andover, yeah, yeah. There, not everybody has one. Maybe right. Right? Yeah. 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 we were, we were a little surprised, yeah. but MASC had like a, a, template. a template, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So I have two questions. We might have answers. <laughs> one is so this speaks to employees of the district. I know an issue came up. I'm going to say last year, it might have been two years ago, of a student posting a GoFundMe. Or a, it might have been a GoFundMe, some, some crowdfunding yes, thing, yes, right. um, which did not seem to be addressed. Was that intentional or? Was it a student for something related to school? Or it was, was a it a student? It was like a, it was it was a, a field trip or a club they, or they a. They were going to I'm trying definitely. to remember. Yes, FMLA. FMLA. So that yeah. was the yeah. beginning of this year. Oh, yeah. was it this they year? had to okay. come with money, and so the girl, the gotcha. girl, okay. did correct. A goal. But that was sort of her. That was on her, right? So I, I don't know that our, we weren't thinking that our charge was to deal with students. It was to deal was with teachers. teachers. Because if the if the if it's a school sponsored activity, and the student does it, we're, we were making the assumption that the teacher would have been involved. So now the teacher needs to. The, the guidelines are that the teacher can't sanction those things um, you know what I mean like I, don't so, know. I guess what I'm what I'm asking is this do, does this I know we'd asked the student to take it down and there was there was a yes does this in any way impact the ability or or have rules around a yeah, student going out for whatever club it is next year to crowdfund well for a field trip right well like I think was no, it, it was the field hockey. It was a sports thing. Yeah. Where Remember, Barbie, all you the had kids that happen to you? set them up. Yes. And that was not. I don't think they. Let no, I think the coach. It, know. I think it ended up being that's an option now. That's that's a fundraising avenue now. That. Well, but that's a crowdfunding. So, so if that was organized by the coach and the coach works for us, they would have to follow. Yeah, this I don't know policy. if there's any. I, I don't know if there's anything out there now, but that's yeah, that's. There's that no needs to be this. The coach would have to follow this policy with you know. Ryan so, would need to just so make the sure coach, the coach is on. So the coach, know that. the coach, right? So the coach would have to fill out this 
right. form. Mm-hmm. But, I, I, but does the coach need to be involved? I guess what I'm, what I'm not saying here is, is, can, is I am a student trying to fundraise for my sports team, my club, my whatever. If I don't tell my the club advisor, this policy doesn't seem to matter. I think if the student fundraises on their own, then we have no control, but they can't fundraise under Georgetown Public, Public Schools. Schools. Right. Which That's is why that last that was and they can't use they, they can't use students they um, said pictures they from the sc- yeah. from the you know from the school they, that that particular student had put yeah the kids it, and she all was fundraising online. for a club it wasn't for the club it was for her to, to participate go. well and then the, the from what I understand the teacher didn't know that she was doing okay. that okay and I think she right. did that through her Facebook page mm. I think it was a it was a go. No, yeah, I know. But well, she was, she was, she was right. soliciting right. through yes. uh, social media. But she had Georgetown Public Schools mm-hmm. and she had FBLA and pictures of all Right, so that's kids. my I guess point. what I'm asking is what stops that? That doesn't seem to not be allowed based yeah. on this. I guess is what I'm getting All right, at. so we can look at that. Yeah. Because this is. There this should this be like a separate one for like students, students or, added. Added. or if it's another paragraph. Right. 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 About right. Just putting in students may not use. Yeah, I, I think we, would, we should. We would be on the safe side to, to say that. Yeah. Like right. add in an additional paragraph, like saying, you know, no student shall be. Can use school using. photo. Okay. Yeah. So this is for distribution. For so yep. if you give us your what your concerns are, yeah, we can take it back. Mm-hmm. Fix it up and then bring it for back sure. for your first reading. So, was there anything else that so jumped my out? Other one the other was question? the classroom X needs tissues and crayons. In and without calling out a, a teacher, that's not my intention. But in my last newsletter, it said we could use donations of and I want to say it was like <laughs> tissues, tissues and, and crayons, crayons. <laughs> which would seem to which this policy is and it doesn't exist yet, so it's obviously not an issue. But this would suggest. Um, for example, a teacher solicitation may say Classroom X needs tissues and crayons, but it should not be directed to parents who have shared their email addresses with the teacher for purposes of communicating about their child. Which, it would seem that a classroom newsletter saying, please bring in tissues and crayons would violate this policy. Well, unless unless it's under a GoFundMe Facebook page. No, but in well, the this isn't a GoFundMe. No, this no, was a, a solicitation of emails. But in the beginning, I know when, it, like at Pembroke, when I had my kids there, the teacher would ask at the beginning of the school year a wish list. No, like no, how no. can I use your email? Can this right. be I'll used use as a class communication as well as just for communication about your child? Did you did they no. you know no, sign anything a, like that? Because do you remember that well, there used to be that? Like, can I use it? Like or the well, can I them. share yes. this with the room parents? Can I? Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. There were different um, things you could you could right. opt out of. Right. Which is right. not so you at least that. in my experience. Yes. Yeah. So not then been. that would be clearly because your email, as far as your your concerned, is to communicate regarding your right. child. But do you not get emails from from like the teacher about like classroom activities and all that other stuff? So this would no, we do. So we got a newsletter. This week or this month, mm-hmm. we did X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And there's a box on the bottom corner that um. says, "Donations needed for the classroom." Mm-hmm. Should not be directed. Something to that effect. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. I don't that think that's the spirit of what this is supposed to be doing. That, that I can see the confusion. I, yeah, so, I don't move that because right because parents do like to. Yeah, but I don't. I think. <laughs> sure. I, I, like that. I think what this is you trying know, to I get at is possible. that you you can't abuse your relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. So so it's you know, like if if you if parents gave you their email, you know, for the purposes of keeping you know, a communication about you your child and the progress your child's making, that you shouldn't just blanketly, you know, bombard them with you know wants and needs. Wants and 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 needs. needs. Yeah. I so I I think it could be said differently because okay. I, I don't think we wanna be in a situation where a teacher can't say, We're looking for tissues. Right. right. Right, that, like that, that, I, I don't think we. I don't mm-hmm. think we well, think what, of yeah, that think when we, we think of yeah, crowdfunding. Should probably just come right. right. Just we'll I think we should. List. I think we may have to say it a different way. But let mm-hmm. us look at that. We'll, mm-hmm. We can look at that I mean, when we. You know, I'm sure she's because that's always been a, a you know a, a big that, thing. Yeah. parents do like to right. donate things like that, and yes. so right. that we it's don't want to. And I think I think I think the interesting thing, Michael, too, is if you're sending if you're sending a newsletter. You know, out in general to people, just a newsy newsletter. That's different than sending out a direct solicitation for something in particular. I think, 
Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I, I think it's different, right? It's, it, it's not targeting right. particular parents. It's just it's not required generally it's making not, a no, it's, it's, it's not saying, Michael, please donate crayons, but it is yeah. emailing the 20 kids in that class right. saying, Right, please but I think that's why they put this in, that you can say this as opposed to directly, Michael, you know, I, I'd like you to do this. That's why that I think they yeah. said so it this way. That's why I think it can be said differently. Okay. Yeah. So let's see if we can't take another stab at that. Because yeah. the spirit of adding it to a newsletter yeah. is not... We don't think that's crowdfunding. Well, like in the morning again. announcements on the high school, they talk about there's a wish list for the maker. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think Space. that's... Mm -hmm. but, Which I think is perfectly fine. But let's, but this let's not targeting anybody. It's not hair. targeting yeah. anybody. It's just, it. you know, if you'd like to, if you have yeah. extra. Because that's not really what fundraising activities. No. It's soliciting kind of a, it's a, it's gray, but it's, that's the problem with this policy. It's so hard because it's yeah. not black and white. You know, like, that's what we kept coming this back is the to. New so way what paragraph are we looking at for this? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, five down. Okay, so any other thoughts on this that we should take into consideration? Okay. Yeah, they were good points, though. Yeah, they're, no, good they're good yeah, points. That's, yeah. that's why that's yeah, the whole purpose you. of the... That's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, we have uh, some transfers. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll transfer the normal. Does anybody have any questions about it? Where's going? Yeah. I, 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 really? Starting well, I, 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 I note our long-term subline. Oh. Yes. Is all, it is a comment. Well, a comment. you know what? It'll go. It'll go down the week of senior exams because those <laughs> teachers will be. <laughs> <laughs> right? we should see but these are long-term subs. These are long-term <laughs> subs. <laughs> uh, nice try. I appreciate the effort. But we move, you know, from the teacher from line, the teacher line too, because yeah, the I teachers yep. aren't there, so that's why we have the long term sub. Yep. Um, so am I correct in 187 through 229? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion for line item transfers 187 through 229, totaling $61,033.59 as presented by Ms. Sutherland. <laughs> so moved. Second. Questions, discussion, comments. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you make it earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, we did have a budget oh, finance meeting. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> this no. was a topic for yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's on his mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's getting late, so we're going to have to quickly go through subcommittee reports. If anybody has any budget and finance met today, what do you got? We are in meeting with the town. Our the the town budget is about eighty thousand dollars less than we asked for, and we are researching ways of of figuring that out. So how are you? Are you going to do like a weekly thing? Like how often are you guys going to meet? Oh, the, oh, not weekly. No, no. no. we didn't. Do you have ideas? Yeah. We, yeah. Have we do have ideas. Yeah, yeah. 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 so that, we, we have a few ideas. Um, and we are watching the preschool budget mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how to bring that into balance as best as we can. Mm -hmm. Did you talk about the um, the lottery? How did that go? Mm -hmm. Lottery went fine. Mm -hmm. We uh, we have some we kids on a waiting long. list. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, just a couple of kids, uh, a couple of kids for full day, five days, which we weren't able to accommodate at this um, at, yet. We, we might be able to. Um, uh, 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 Tuesday, Thursdays seem to be less popular. Right. Well, so waiting list is a little misleading because there are open slots, but it's just not the days that these people oh, want. Yeah. Oh. So that's why they're on the that waiting list. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So there yeah. are some open. Yeah, there's a few Some open. slots open. Okay, and how do people go about um, finding out about it? Just like, do they call? 
find out if there's spots. Yeah, like if if they're looking for a certain time, they call. Yeah, they would call. Mm -hmm. There's information on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they just throw out the date they're looking for, and that person would know right right off if it's available. That's right. Okay. So we're we're definitely looking at at that. Yeah. So we are seeing a a meaningful decline in, I think, based on what we saw today, we're at about 53 students. Hmm. Down. No, that's yeah. total. That's oh wow! But we're only doing two and a half. So one right. thing that one thing that did um, strike everybody when we did the lottery is that we really couldn't support the additional class that we reduced. There weren't there weren't enough people signed up and or on the waiting list to support remain maintaining that. Yeah. 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 Well, at least we know that. You know, at least do we not at like, oh, should we, shouldn't we? Like, it's, no. it's clear. So no, it's, and we made the decision, you know, anticipating that. So, you know, those things are already taken care of. And yeah. we didn't we didn't put three and a half uh, classes up. We didn't offer uh, it. We didn't so offer it. Away. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but I think, you know, now we're going to continue to engage in what are options going forward because... You know, we're we're not at the place where we where we're able to have any carry forward that's of any meaning, and um, mm-hmm. you know, we either have to move things off the revolving account, or it, it's going to be hard to reduce it further because mm-hmm. there's, right. you know, we re- really we're we're down to almost you know running a couple of integrated classrooms. I mean, it's not so mm-hmm. different than when in the days when Pat Chick and Jerry White were the two teachers, right? So we, we we really have to put our heads together, the preschool, you know, teachers as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thanks for that update. Um, governance. We saw what you've been working on. So thank you guys <laughs> both for working on that. Um, negotiations. Yeah. We're working hard working. towards. Um, well, I shouldn't say working hard. It's going well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the process is is always um, a good one. So we have a meeting coming up. Um, next week? Next week or the week after. April? I forget which. Yeah, I think shortly. it will be next week. It is. It's shortly. So hopefully we'll have some good news from that one, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, that would yeah. be nice. We're close, I feel like. Good. Um, public relations? It's April 1st, isn't it? Yeah. Is April it Monday? April 1st. Oh, okay. Yeah, Monday. Mm. We were no, we just met last week, the week before. Yeah. Yeah, oh. that week before, and it, it was around the preschool. So It was, it was all about the preschool. Yeah. yeah. The issues okay. we just discussed. Okay. Safety, we met, but I think I already gave an update. You did, on that. did yeah. And then uh, the superintendent evaluation. Can we remove school building committee from the subcommittee? Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah because it's closed out. It's done. It's closed it's out. It's closed oh, out. I think we great. can remove that. <laughs> yep. We're done. Good. We're done. The school building committee. It's gone. So that's closed out. Yep. Yes. So, um, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, so we have a very generous donation from the Georgetown PTA for a um, $1,000 check that is going towards a field trip. Mm -hmm. Duck tours. I think it's the fifth grade. Duck tours. Oh, it is the duck tours, yeah. It is the duck tours. That was the best. Yeah, (laughs) that was the best. As long as you had a good day. Oh, yes. And a good (laughs) guide. And a good guide. Yeah, and a good guide. It was so much fun. That was a fun day. It was. It's expensive. Yeah, it is sixty four hundred dollars for the well, sixty three hundred total mm-hmm. with, wow. with all the um, wow. the different mm-hmm. duck tours and then the transportation to get there. So, the um, PTA has generously donated a thousand dollars, which again they're Very wonderful nice. and, yeah. and contributing to these expensive field trips to get the um, financial burden of the whole trip off of the parents, um, mm-hmm. and they they need to book this. Um, Time sensitive, right. yeah. Yes, because those duck boats. Yeah, um, duck boat season. They book up fast. So, I wanted to make a motion to accept the very generous donation from the PTA in the amount of a thousand dollars that will go towards the um, Penbrook field trip for the duck tours. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 
uh, speaking of the PTA, awesome job last night at the yeah. Spelling Bee. Oh, great. Oh, that was Thank so you so great. Yes. All of you, so great. For, Thank you for participating. For doing as much work as you did and for Elizabeth's work. Yep. Uh, she did a great job. And the, um, those kids are just amazing. Very yeah. Yeah. I can't believe what they can spell. Yeah. Well, and I guess <laughs> perhaps that's a testament to our foundation's program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, they were. I just, noticed that it went in all the six syllable types. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you to you, Barbie, for moderating. Yeah. Oh, great. it was fun. I like doing that. Great I, job. I thank you. I prefer to do that over the bell, bell ringing. ringing. <laughs> yeah, I went a little Everyone crazy. Bell. <laughs> but I do have to say. Um, and I have to tell Maureen O'Connor this because she said, oh, you'll be fine with the sentences. Well, some of those words, <laughs> thank you to the audience. They, I can see them on the spot at one. I'm like, oh, because we, the children said, yeah. can yeah. you use that in a sentence? I'm like, um, this is what was And I even called out the superintendent. I she was, was able in the to audience. Oh. But it was fauna. Well, F A U N A. It's yeah. Florin Fauna. That's what yeah. she said. Yeah. yeah. Carol, Carol, I didn't know. Fauna. And so, as soon as the, the girl looked at me, and as soon as she said, Can you use that in a sentence? I said, No. <laughs> <laughs> but the True. superintendent can. I cannot use Fauna in a sentence. Does that help you? <laughs> one, one of our judges was a high school student, and she said, You know, I remember the, the spelling bee, and uh, some of those words I don't think I've ever used. And I said, yeah. I'm sorry, honey. You know, the list, I believe, is from the PTA. It's, from, it's, a, it's a PTA. Well, you know? actually, it's from foundations. So well, actually, it, it comes from the literacy coaches, okay. um, oh, Kate okay. and which comes from foundations because I noticed that it was going very sequential mm -hmm. in, oh, in the, the words, in the words and, and the way that they are introduced in foundations, or at least yeah. that's what I noticed with the words. Well, well I could okay, tell those so, kids okay. were definitely familiar with them. Which well, yeah, and Harold was supposed to have been from years ago. You could ago, see so they were thinking about the syllables. They really were, you know, if you looked at them. They did a great job, though. All those kids, just again, just to get up there in front of. Of oh my everyone. God. The, the place was packed. Oh, we so we and you really gotta good. love Connor Durkee. I gotta call oh, him out. Oh, you know, so he, he's a high school student. So good. And you know, last year, just out of the blue, like nobody asked him to do anything, but he would see the little kids start to cry, and so he got some, <laughs> he got some tissues. So this year, aside from being one of the judges. Whenever any of the ch children would leave and they would be crying, he would come over to them with a tissue and give them a little Aww. tissue. You know, he probably remembered like what it was like. Yeah, to, yeah. To I be think that was so thoughtful. You know, you know. my kids still job. remember the he word really they does. got out on. Yeah, me too. He I remember the remember word the I got word. out on. What was it? Beautiful. I forgot the U. Right. See, and you did never, that in the third grade. I, that was one of the words last night. Yeah, I know that. That kid was spelling it. I had the heart palpitation. But you'll never get that word wrong. Never, ever. No. 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 So the PTA does a great job. I, I have to yeah. say, it's come really such a long way. I have to say, Michael's daughter was adorable, oh, and she so and she got the word snarky. So she's <laughs> snarky. like snarky. What's snarky? <laughs> the way you're being right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was just adorable. But I said to him, she's right as a little whip. You know, she's like. If there's a Q, there has to be a U. She, she was giving me all the little grammar. She was giving me all the little grammar rules. And she said, that's easy. Milk, shake. If you can smell milk and you can smell shake, you can smell milkshake. You just put them together. <laughs> I was having a, bla I was I having a blast was with her. She had said the bell she oh, yeah. for the kids yeah. that got it correctly. Yeah, she didn't right. like the fact that the kids had to get the bell when they were wrong. She yeah. wanted she them wanted to get to it when they were right. So we, yeah. I'll, I'll admit, as I was up there, you know, I was the, the, the right. judging, the rounds judge. And after each word, somebody in the audience would just say, ding, for every word that was spelled wrong. Who the heck is doing that? Only to find out. And I was, was trying like, to say to her, <laughs> 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 I was say to her it might confuse them. In, in the fifth grade spelling bee, one of uh, um, a person's phone has the date yes, like yes. That for, their, for their text, mm -hmm. and it went off. And all of a sudden, the kids are like, you know, and people were thinking, oh, did they get it wrong? Did they but get it wrong? And, you know, timing couldn't have been so that the yeah, student spelled right the word after. correctly, was walking back to the seat, and the, the phone goes Not off. So. Yeah. Yeah, but it was great, and uh, the yeah, it was, was a great fun. job. That's not an easy, and I love no, it, It's not an easy um, event to put together, you know. But they they really made it so much bigger with the food that they offer. And do you know how much how much money it raised for the PTA? Um, for it was a sixth grade, right? Or who was the no? Oh. It was PTA. Oh, it was PTA. PTA. So the concessions, yeah. I think. Made about four hundred fifty dollars. Oh, that's good. And does yeah. the record still contribute? Yes. Uh, yes. I guess they, 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 they were there yeah. taking yes. pictures. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so the, yeah. when the students sign up for free, 
Um, they wind up getting a certificate. They can choose a worry stone, which some oh, of them have wow, in cool. their hands. So if they're feeling nervous, they kind of like a yeah. you know, comfort. Yeah. And then they also get a scholastic book they get to choose. Um, this is just for That's great. Size That's size yeah, and then the top three get trophies yeah. and gift cards. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. We used to do savings bonds. That's what I mean back then. Oh, savings <laughs> bonds. <laughs> I think it's more stressful on the parents and the kids because the parents are like so nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but so it is. Funny. it's tough on the parents. But that's why I'm telling you we should have a parent spelling bee. Other districts oh, do it. I know. I oh, I think that would be for awesome fundraiser. for a fundraiser. And they, they people, do. what happens is adults form teams and they yes. give themselves names and it, it's it really, fun. it money. does, because yes. you pay to be a team. Two, like two other idea. dates, Barbie. One is the um, GEF Gala. Oh, yep. that's is, the, is the Friday fifth. Night. Friday, Friday the 5th. April 5th. April 5th yeah. at, the <laughs> Pierce, <laughs> at the Pierce Farm at Witch Hill yeah, right. in Topsfield. Top and that's where they give out the, you know, GEF. Obviously, the uh, partner in education, the uh, uh, grants, which it, uh, nine grant they got nine grants and they're funding all nine grants. This that's amazing. Excellent. And then the other is um, just okay. for information, the parent group that you know is wants to come together to sort of talk about the teen center, or, you know, the youth rec center. That's Monday um, the eighth. So if anybody oh. is out there that's interested in coming, well, I mean, they'll put information out, but. That's not at the eighth. I, I think it's like six o'clock or something. It's at, oh, in, so the at the teens, in the teen center. In the teen. Yeah, up, upstairs. Yeah. And we're, do you have information we're, we're gonna have, teen center? We're going to have the teen center. I can push that out. I mean. Yeah, I'll get you some okay. tea on that. Yeah, so it's it really is a you know kind of rally the troops right right and then uh, the plan would be to get a meeting with the kids so we can okay. start you know it's pretty much cleaned out up there you know in terms oh, yeah. of ready to you know. So, okay. Yeah. So anyway, those are just a couple of other dates coming up. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, I think we're good. So no executive session. Yep. There's no reason to have an executive session this evening. Um, so I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8:54 p.m. So Second. Does anyone want to discuss that? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Good night.